Good evening and welcome to the College Boulevard Activity Center in Olathe. Tonight's Ivy High School Game of the Week. It's the BUnion.com Kansas versus Missouri All-Star High School Football Game put on by the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association featuring some of the top metro area players from the class of 2019. Hi everybody, Kevin Wyke along with Dion Clisso from Preps KC. Welcome to the Ivy High School Game of the Week. Brief history lesson here, Dion. Since 2010, Missouri dominated this game. They won seven of the last eight. But last year, it was Kansas domination, 30 to nothing. What's the state of the union for this matchup? Well, I know Kansas really needed to break that streak last year. They were very motivated. They made a huge statement with that 30 to nothing win behind a flex bone offense that just ran all over Missouri. Missouri got the pride hurt a little bit last year, and so there's a, a little bit of a chip that maybe they didn't have going into last year's game. So this is going to be interesting. That both teams are kind of back on equal footing. It's a 14-12 series now, so it's really going to be fun to see how these teams come out tonight. Our sideline reporter is Nick McCabe. He'll give us a unique perspective talking to players and coaches while the game's going on, but two different offenses in this game, Nick. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch. I mean, it's, the weather is perfect tonight. Field conditions are amazing. There's very little wind. It's a great night for football. We're going to talk a lot about all of the players and the coaches that are involved in this game here tonight. But I think the interesting thing to watch on the field will be a contrast in offensive styles. Benny Palmer, the offensive coordinator for the Missouri side, is going to run a widespread offense, a spread offense, four wides a lot of times. Meanwhile, on the other side, Dustin Delaney, the offensive coordinator, of course, very famous for that flex bone that he ran out in Hutch with uh, Coach Randy Dryling. So it's going to be fun to watch a ground attack versus a spread attack. And that's what we're going to get here tonight between these two teams, guys. Thanks, Nick. The border war continues in 2019. Back with the opening kickoff. You're watching the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. The High V High School Game of the Week is brought to you by High V, the official sponsor of high school spirit. Well, Nick mentioned that the weather is spectacular here in southern Johnson County in Olathe at Seaback. As we're ready for the opening kickoff, Kansas has won the opening coin toss. They don't have the blue tops and white pants. Missouri with the yellow tops and white pants. And there's the Missouri All-Stars coach, the head coach of Van Horn and his Three years complete, a big story with him, Dion, seven and four, and uh, a first playoff win in more than a decade. Uh, yeah, they, they've done a great job with that program. He came over from Raytown and uh, really put his stamp on that. They're doing a lot of great things over at Van Horn, uh, really changing that whole dynamic of that community, and that football program is a big part of it. And the only coach for the Firebirds of Lawrence Free State, he's done after this year, 22 years, Bob Lisher, a lot of wins, a lot of playoff appearances. Just a consistent winner no matter what, uh, always deep in the playoffs. 19 playoff appearances in 22 years there. And, uh, one trip to the state championship game. He won this game in 2010 as a head coach. He was an assistant coach last year when they won it, so he's been a good luck charm for Kansas the last few times. They've won the game. Gavin Frizzell, the kicker from Kearney with the run-up. And we are underway. Is this one going to scoot inside the five? A little muff by the return man. That's Jay Haynes of Olathe South. And... Like he ran into an invisible wall at the 30 yard line and went down there. He is the son of former Chiefs running back Jesse Haynes. And the offense for the Kansas squad will check out on the field. And once again, Dion, we're going to see the flex bone offense of Coach Dustin Delaney. Well, he won a state championship at Shawnee Mission East back in 2014 with this offense. Yeah, he has. And, you know, he's a disciple of Randy Drawing. They won a lot of state championships out at Hutch with this. And, of course, Aquinas won it last year. And you're going to see the Aquinas quarterback, Tate Raboyne, coming out and triggering this thing right off the bat. And the fullback in this offense is Connor McQuillan from Lansing. You'll see a lot of motion. This will be the fullback up the middle. He's a big grinder at 6'1", 205 pounds. He'll get a couple of yards right up the middle. That's, a, that's what they like to do with this. I mean, three yards here, four yards here, and then break a big one. It's going to be big on this Missouri defensive line to kind of hold that up and let those linebackers flood. Nathan Gray, an outstanding linebacker from Liberty, number 10. He's going to have to be key there in the middle, uh, along with uh, Brian Bird from uh, Smithville, who's going to be another middle linebacker. It's a 4-2-5 defense. Coach Harris, the head coach, is the defensive coordinator. Swing it out. This is Eric Olson, and he's blown up nicely. 
as coming up and making the play, Lamont Washington, the weak side safety from Hogan Prep. Washington just blows this thing up right away. Scoots stays in a lane and, and does what you're supposed to do against that flex move. Don't get sucked inside. One thing that Missouri does have is speed, and that's going to be something to see if they can uh, kip get the Kansas guys running a little more sideline to sideline, that will help those linebackers like Boyd and Gray, along with those defensive backs, tackle those guys. Washington was a quarterback at Hogan Prep, going to Missouri Western. And now it's going to be third down and long for this run offense. LeBoyne puts it on the ground, now going to throw down the field, finds Billy Bartlett close to the first down, right at the marker, just across the 40-yard line. The Blue Valley Southwest wide receiver signaling first down. Let's see what the uh, officials say. Eh? Now they throw up fourth down. Boy, down on the field here. He just lost it, and then he, he kind of does a dodge there. Boyd comes around and smacks him, but he's able to deliver a nice ball out there to Bartlett. Punt unit is not out on fourth down, and one yard. Let's see if they try to draw them offside. They will go for it with McQuillan backing his way, and he has the first down for the Kansas All-Stars. I'm not shocked by that. They feel like they can get three yards any time, and that's what they've got to do. You know, one thing, you know, we always deal with in these All-Star games is heat, and it's really the breezes out there. It's not a bad thing. So last year, that flexbone did a lot of that. Three yards here, two yards there, five yards there, and just warmed down. Be curious to see how the players react this year. Sturdy and Jackson are the wingbacks. Two, two receivers to the right. And the ball comes out on this running play. Missouri says they have it. Nathan Gray has recovered it for the Missouri All-Stars. Just at first glance, it looked like McCullough didn't necessarily expect to get that ball, and it was a bad mesh point there between him and LeBoyne. So our first turnover is a fumble by the Flexbone offense. Yeah. Yeah, because McQuillan was, he didn't turn around back for the ball, so I don't think he was expecting to have that. So the Missouri offense, now this is going to be a contrasting offense to what we just saw. This will be a pass offense led by Kellen Samatsik, the quarterback from Smithville. And he'll go shotgun and empty, and they'll go five wide. <laughs> Quarterback under pressure, throwing wide and incomplete. Yes, trying to hit uh, his running back, Roderick Smith, out of Grandview, out of the backfield, second down and 10. Well, the Kansas squad did a good job of blitzing on that and making Samantha step to the side and, and rush that throw. I think that was Matt Georgie, the Lawrence Free State outside linebacker, putting the pressure on. Kansas offense will be a 3-4. Brett Orbazan, who received a Dave Besore coaching award prior to the game. He is the defensive coordinator. It's been a long time as a defensive coordinator for Bob Lisher back in his Lawrence Free State days, doing a great job with Shawnee Mission South. Pass to the outside, caught by Harold Trainer from Grandview. Tackled immediately at the 40-yard line as making the stop was Jay Haynes as we check in now with Nick. All right, thanks, guys. I've got Nathan Gray just made a big play on defense. First big play of the game. I recovered a fumble. Tell us about the play. Um, well, it was a play wherever I was supposed to blitz in the B gap. My buddy Brian, he filled the he filled the other A gap where the guy fumbled the ball, and then I just picked it up in the in the scram there. Tell us about your season of Liberty. It was a good year. We uh, just got moved up to Class Six. I feel like we exceeded everyone's expectations, but next year look for us to be better. And in Northwest Missouri. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. That's Nathan Gray, guys. Thanks, Nick. The Van Horn quarterback getting in the game. That is Sean Ross. Now, he is the runner of all the quarterbacks for the Missouri side, and we see it right there. A big play, Dion on third down, and a great run by Sean Ross of Van Horn. It's just a zone right here, and he gets out. He breaks one tackle there, and he's, his speed is so good. Nice block on the outside, and then he's off to the races. They're lucky they didn't give up a, a touchdown there. Kansas does a good job of keeping him out of the end zone. 32 yards, and it'll be first and goal for the Missouri All-Stars trying to convert points after the Kansas All-Stars fumble on their first drive of the game. And inside handoff. And that is... John Eldridge running back from Lee Summit North. He's a kid headed to the Air Force Academy, a very good student at North. 
high GPA, National Honor Society, going to study engineering. He was a great track athlete as well yeah, in his high school days. Christian Carter, the quarterback from Lisa North, who's injured and couldn't play tonight. It's also, it was on the team. They're two, two fourths of the four by 100 uh, state champion in Missouri Class 5. So they've got some speed out there. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, they won it in 2018. Second and goal, and the slant pass to Trainer incomplete. Flag comes in late. Coverage by Jay Haynes from Olathe South. Well, for Haynes there, that's kind of an unfortunate situation for him because he actually was playing uh, good defense on that. The ball was behind, so the receiver stopped, and Haynes just ran right into him, and they're going to get that call on the pass interference, so they get a fresh set of downs here. The referee tonight in charge for this All-Star game is Jack Messer. Deal yeah, see, Samantic's triggering. It's it's high and behind, and really Haynes just kind of runs into it. Second and goal. Second down and goal, and into the end zone is Missouri. Yeah, scoring that was Jonas Bennett, outstanding receiver and tailback for Odessa. They just go wildly yeah. up there. But, you know, when you've got a, a running quarterback in Sean Ross, and you've got Jonas Bennett who can do uh, direct snap stuff, and then you've got Simone Slick and Roush who can throw the ball on. Uh, they've got some decent weapons on that offense for Missouri, and, and we've seen here in the first drive how it really got going. So able to take advantage of the Kansas turnover. And when you talk to the Missouri coaches, they say the most impressive guy in practice this week has been Jonas Bennett of Odessa. He can do it all. They'll play him on defense as well. Yeah, he's, a, he's a really talented guy. He had a brother, Josiah Bennett, who played on the team that went to the 2015 state championship game in Class 3 in Missouri. And, uh, he's an outstanding player, a uh, really talented football uh, family. Gavin Frizzell, the Carney kicker, able to knock through the extra point. And Missouri off to the fast start. After last year being shut out at Leavenworth, I think a lot of people were surprised by that, Dion. Missouri just dominating the game, won seven in a row, and then Kansas spanks them there at Leavenworth, 30 to nothing. Yeah, they got that early lead, and, and, and some breaks went their way in the first half, and got a lot of momentum, and Missouri was forced to try and catch up, and they just didn't have enough possessions, really, in the second half to make it happen. Their, their passing offense wasn't there, and uh, they switched up and went to a running quarterback, kid out of Kansas City Central, and that got some things going, but they still never even crossed the Goal. And I think really Kansas just kind of wore them out. Now for Coach Harris, he's got to feel like his defense can attack even more. Did you hear the, when Nick was talking with uh, Nathan Gray, Boyd and he are looking to shoot gaps. They're looking to shoot gaps wherever they, they can. I think they like their defensive backfield to be able to, you know, if they miss a gap, they've got enough speed to come up and cover for those mistakes. You saw Washington make a big play on the outside. So that's probably a pretty big strategy for them is to keep those middle inside linebackers pretty active all night long. Zell. This will be Conaway. No, he pulls his hands back. It will be a touchback. First and 10 from the 20 yard line for the Kansas All-Stars offense. Got a first down, but then turn the ball over and Usually, Dion in these games, the defense is ahead of the offense because offense is so timing and rhythm oriented. You know, last year, the first uh, drive for Kansas, they kind of stalled a little. Um, and their center, Jack Burns, who's from Bishop Miege, outstanding player for Bishop Miege last year, they said once he kind of got the line calls down, that's when things get going. So you never know that this line could still need to mesh a little bit here. New quarterback will be Hunter Thomas from Olathe East High School. Another running quarterback here. He's used to running playing option football at Olathe East. Can't get used to the matte black helmets on an Olathe East player. As that was Bennett Disco from Grain Valley, the defensive end, who was in the neutral zone early. Bennett's got one of the best last names here. There's no doubt about that. Bennett Disco. There's the big guy headed to UCM at four sacks for Coach Alley. Rain Valley. So first down and five for this flex bone offense. Pitch it out. Here's the speedster from Shawnee Mission North. Billy Conaway turning the corner. There goes Billy off to the races. 
breaking tackles, and he's still <laughs> going inside the 20, tackled near the 15-yard line. Yeah, and finally tracked down by Porto Sages, Khalil Smith, and Conaway is a receiver who can do a little bit of everything. What a powerful run this is. You see him, it's an end-around pitch. He gets to the outside edge with his speed, gets great blocking on the outside, and then turns it up, breaks one tackle, another tackle, a third tackle, and then the trusty hands of Khalil Smith, who was a big part of Fort Osage's run to the state championship game in Class 5 in Missouri, tracks him down, but not before a huge game that has flipped the field easily for Kansas. Billy headed to the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, South Dakota. That's 59 on that one. Here's McQuillan, the fourth of five brothers to play at Lansing. Dion, you've probably seen a few of his <laughs> been brothers. A few that's come uh, yeah, I had to ask him straight up in practice. I said, who's the best uh, McQuillan brother? He said, I'm the best on offense, but Colin was the best defender. <laughs> and there's one more coming, a freshman named Cohen. So a lot of McQuillan brothers wearing the red of Lansing. Well, those football coaches like it when you can get two, three, four brothers all playing the same. You see some of the helmets on the offensive line. You've got two DeSoto kids. They run a flex bone type offense, so it's good to have those offensive linemen who know what they're doing out there. Hunter got three yards, second down and seven. Motion by Sturdy. They'll pitch it to him. This is Keegan Sturdy from DeSoto. Now cut off, now trying to cut back. And he is taken down. And that'll be uh, the big guy, Mason Goffey from Belton. And he, uh, <laughs> once he finally got him down, Pretty excited. We got an injured player, looks like, on the far sideline here, Missouri guy. Timeout. Check on a player on the sideline. That's, yeah, Lamont Washington from Hogan Prep. But for that number 77 there, this is his final game. He's going to college as a student and so excited uh, to play in this one final game. Most of these guys are going, Dion, to play college, but some of these, this is their final game. Yeah, you know, Sturdy makes a, a nice run here, and he, he was a nice addition to DeSoto last year. Um, and then Gafoy here just gets him tackling. <laughs> He's pretty excited about it. You know, it's funny, the people who say this should only be players going to college, I think it's great if this, if this is somebody's last game. Thomas, play action, floats it to the back of the end zone, and the catch is made, but out of the end zone, incomplete by Logan Talley from Mill Valley. Yeah, a talented receiver. There was two guys, Logan Talley, uh, one of the better receivers in the Metro last year. Uh, just a little too long on that throw by Thomas. And, and they'd have had a touchdown because those two guys were pretty much open in the, in the back of the end zone. That'll leave them fourth down and eight, and they'll try a 31-yard field goal by Cameron Lake, who's long. Is 42, so this is well within his range. We're going with the hole. Lake, the Lawrence Free State kicker, headed to Washburn. Can't convert. And Kansas driving down the field, comes up empty on the missed 31 yard field goal. Well, they got to feel like that's a big opportunity miss there with the big run by Conway Jr. And uh, feeling like you're going to get a score here to even, and then you, you know, even though you get stopped, uh, you have a chance to, to at least get some points on the board and then miss a field goal. So the ball over on downs goes to the Missouri offense. They will take over first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Well, and you, you wonder if you're Missouri. Normally, after giving up a drive, you'd say, hey, let's get our, you know, get some things going here. Get our defense some rest. But both these defenses have, have not played too much because it's been big plays that have moved the ball down the field. Quarterback is Alex Roush out of Liberty, and he gives it off to Eldridge, and he's tackled for a loss. Some of the guys making their presence felt there. Zach Flowers from Baldwin, number 25, kind of leading the charge. One of the outside linebackers for the Kansas All-Stars. He's headed to Baker, so he's going to stay right at home. Well, that play kind of plays into what the defense of Kansas wants to do. They want to keep those guys running sideline to sideline. He had no chance to turn up and was stuffed, and a big loss there, and it's second 16. Roush, a good passer, 2,200 yards, 21 touchdowns. He was the conference player of the year for the Liberty Blue Jays. Out of the shotgun. On second down and long, now he's going to take off. Not going anywhere. He's coming up and making the stop, Sage Seperda from Mill Valley. Well, those snaps sometimes, those are little things that usually are practiced out 
um, all the time and are ready to go. And it's one of those things that uh, sometimes can be a little, a little stiff and a little off right off the bat. Alex Roush, one of the McCarthy Auto Group scholarship athlete winners. Congratulations to him. And Thanks again to the McCarthy Auto Group again. Yeah, he's the second straight Liberty quarterback to play in this game. Thomas Hymers played last year. Another low snap. On third down and long, throwing down the field. Bennett makes the catch near midfield for the first down. Jonas Bennett scores the touchdown and now makes a tough catch for a Missouri All-Stars first down. Well, and Dalton White for Piper had great coverage. He just had his back turned and the thing hung up there forever and Bennett played it almost like a punt. He just waited, 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 got behind it. White had good coverage there, but Bennett makes another big play. 30 yards and a first down. Jonas Bennett set it to Missouri Western to play college football and study secondary education. Low snap. Uh, Given off on a running play, and this is Jonas Bennett getting a lot of work early as we check in again with Nick. All right, thanks, guys. I'm here with Billy Conaway Jr. Billy, tell us about the big play there. Uh, coach told me to trust the, trust the pitch. I trusted it. I didn't worry about any of my guys not making the block. They made it, and I was just I was able to do what I always do, go make a play. Tell us about uh, your decision to head to South Dakota to play football. Oh, man, it was great up there. I uh, went on my, took my two visits up there. It was wonderful. So by the time it was time, nobody else was there. They were there. They showed me a lot of love from along, from the beginning. So enjoy your last game in high school. Yes. Thanks, Nick. Thank Billy. And uh, that was an incompletion to Garrett Thompson. Just running right down the seam there, and the Smithville wide receiver couldn't run under the Roush pass. And it's going to be third down in five facing the Missouri All-Stars. Yeah, just a little too much air under that one. And Thompson didn't have a chance to get it. That, that talented receiver, that Smithville team, that went to the semis in class four in Missouri, uh, one of their best runs in, in the school history. And now here we see Sean Ross in the backfield again. Thompson was like the first guy here. I said, what are you doing here so early? You need to... The tape job, he said, no, I just came straight from work to the football stadium. As this play is thrown for a loss, and it's Sean Ross, the Van Horn quarterback, stopped by Goody on the linebacker from St. Thomas Aquinas, and it's fourth down. Yeah, they weren't fooled much on this one. Goody on really just stayed home, and Ross did Last time, didn't Sean broke a long run. Yeah. This time, not so fast, they said. Honey muted out. Brian Boyd, the Smithville player, and this one not one of his best efforts off the side of his foot. He goes out of bounds just inside the 25 yard line. So this will be a very short punt. Some 20 yards. Boyd is a tough linebacker and a tough running back for Smithville who had a breakout season 12 and 2. In it all the way to the state semifinals. Great job by Jason Ambrosian there. Uh, great season for the team in green. Yeah, that's uh, they really kind of got over the hump for the first time, beat Black County. And that was kind of their bugaboo. They lost. They had a 27 nothing lead on Black County in the regular season, gave it up, but they didn't let that happen in the playoffs. Let's check in now on our sidelines with Nick. Well, guys, uh, just because it's an all-star game doesn't mean they're not coaching hard. I, I watched the huddle with the Kansas offense right after they came off the field off their last series. Dustin Delaney was doing a lot of teaching, a lot of correcting. Obviously, a lot of these guys haven't run this system. They're playing for him right now, so they're, they're talking about some basic fundamentals, but he's coaching them hard, guys. And this is a quarterback run by Raboyne. He got hit hard, lost his helmet. He looks like Michael Rappaport, the actor, a little bit. Says he didn't know who that guy was, but that's a first down run to the 46-yard line and a gain of some 23 yards by Tate Raboyne. Yeah, he really triggered the offense for Aquinas all year long. And, uh, when you talk to Coach Dryling, he just he said he was the coach on the field. I mean, I know that's a cliche, but really just, you know, smart player that knew the right guy in the right spot to do things. Loss of helmet has him on the sidelines for a play as Hunter Thomas back in. Now, Missouri has four quarterbacks. And we've seen all four of them. And on the Kansas side, they only have two quarterbacks. So, Lemoyne looks to be okay. And will be Thomas in on this first and 10 play. And this will be an inside running play. And this will be Trey Carney, the Olathe East running back. 
he has a lot to prove tonight, Dan. He got hurt early in the year, and he really wants to show people that he is a elite level back. Yeah, but you see those guys. I remember a couple years ago, um, a kid from Carney who got hurt and had the t all those kick returns in the, in the game. And he yep. started up at North, <laughs> Northwest Missouri State. So, you know, the guys who get hurt and have a chance to play one more time before they go to college, a lot of times they bring a, a pretty good amount of steam into the game. He got injured week two at about 400 yards prior to that, but he says, I got a lot to prove tonight. As they pitch it off, this is Eric Olson from Blue Valley. Another guy who got hurt. Yeah. Season. He uh, got limited time due to injuries. A tremendous student, and he gets the first down run on the near sideline going to the Colorado School of Mines. And he's going to study engineering there and play college football. Well, I know, you know, Blue Valley didn't have one of the years that they thought they would have, but uh, one of the reasons were injuries to key players, and Eric Olson was definitely a key player for them, and him not being on the field hurt them. What we're seeing right now out of this flex mode is they're going wide, they're going option, and that's getting bigger chunk plays, and they may have found something here. First and 10, Raboyne back in the game. Hit as he goes back, and he is sacked. Nice play by Jake Fisher from Smithville. Well, we talk about the Smithville players, Garrett Thompson, Kellen Simonsic, Brian Boyd, Jake Fisher, their outstanding defensive end. And uh, I tell you, he just, this is just straight bull rush here. There's a hold. <laughs> and there's nothing they can do about it. He had, the offensive lineman had his arms around his waist trying to keep Raboyan upright, but there was nothing happening there. Kyoko from Shawnee Mission West got uh, taken advantage of by number four there, Jake Fisher, going to Northwest Missouri State. Play college football. His sister is a soccer athlete at Missouri State, so he's from a very athletic family. Is this running play? Not for much by the Olathe East running back, Trey Carney. Number 35, Trey Carney on the carry for Kansas. You see Kansas here in the third and long. And I'm sure Coach Harris, you know, who's running the defense for Missouri, that's exactly what he wants. He, he wants to see it in third and eight, third and nine, anything over third and ten, I bet he's thrilled. That being said, you know, Raboy, can, he can throw the ball. They, they, they threw the ball more than you would think at Aquinas. Kansas All-Stars timeout. Bob Lisher is not done coaching, though, Dion. He is <laughs> headed to the Missouri side and taking a job at William Crisper, uh, which is becoming the home for retired Kansas coaches. We've got uh, Coach Myers used to be at Olathe East is over there. Gene Weir is going to be on staff over there. So. The offensive coordinator. Yeah. Bob's going to coach the offensive line as we uh, check in. Sunflower <laughs> League East over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the old geezer society. <laughs> we check in with Nick here. Well, guys, when you look at this flex bone, the, the running backs, especially when they run around the edge, are really asked, the running backs and the receivers, are asked to block. And earlier in that series, Cameron Jackson from St. Thomas Aquinas, he knows the system. He laid a big block to spring that long run. So watch that on the edge. Watch those uh, running backs and receivers for this offense block. If they're effective, the offense for Kansas will probably be effective as well. That's a great point, Nick. And, and those last few plays, those those receivers out there blocking it. And that's the thing, you know, when you spring big runs, it's nine times out of ten. Yeah, the five up front do the job, but to get deep, you got to have those receivers out there clearing the path as well. Third down and long, the sack, the big play thus far in this drive. Pitch it back to Conaway, the juggling, then the speed. And Billy going out near the 31-yard line. That's very close to the first down. We saw Billy with a 59-yard run earlier in the quarter. Right on it there. Boy, Missouri good, did a good job of disrupting this. But Conway holds on, and, and you see that quickness and that burst he has, and he finishes the run, which may be enough for a first down. And it is. And Billy Conway, Jr., from Shawnee Mission North. Coach Zach Rampy this past year. Yeah. He's injured earlier in the practices, but looks okay for game night. Mentioned that he went up to South Dakota to see his new college digs. And inside handoff to the fullback. Keep the defense honest. This is Carney for a short game. The Olathe East running back still can't get used to the matte black helmets on Olathe East players after the orange helmets for so long. And 
that'll be the final play of our first quarter with Missouri leading seven to nothing as you're watching the 28th annual bunion.com Kansas versus Missouri all-star football game from Seaback in Olathe and you're watching the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week on Spectrum Sports. Back here in Olathe at Seaback, beautiful mid-June night. We say early happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there watching the action coming up this weekend. Make sure you hook up your father. The weather here in the upper 70s, and uh, Dion, we've uh, sweated through a few of these games in years past, but the guys, uh, actually the practices were pretty good, other than a couple. Not bad on the weather. We've heard a lot of grumbling in 2019 about the weather, but we can't say much bad about it today. playing like the last week and a half, and uh, really, for these kids, being able to practice in, you know, 70 to 80 degree weather, like September weather, that's fantastic for them, and it helps keep them healthy, helps keep them ready for this game. Second down and seven, first play of the second quarter, and this is Carney. He was grabbed around the legs by Jack Creason from Excelsior Springs, the inside linebacker headed to Northwest Missouri State as a student. And going to study business there, business management. There's Jack. Good season for Excelsior Springs, winning eight games. Previous play before this, uh, Will Smith, the defensive back from Missouri, and uh, Matt Georgie from Lawrence Free State were 20 yards away from the play, tossing each other around because Georgie was still blocking. <laughs> Third down at five. Go up the middle, not going to get the first down as Missouri clogs up the middle as Carney, just a brute force runner. 5'10", a buck 95. Low center of gravity, but he'll be short. He'll be fourth down in a couple facing the Kansas All-Stars. Well, I, I would think that they feel like they're in fourth down territory. And they, yeah, we've seen him go for it yeah. in the first quarter. Convert. Slisher. Afraid to go for it. Imagine here. Seeing his team miss a field goal of 31 yards. It's really their only scoring opportunity back in the first quarter. Eight seconds, seven, six. Just got the playoff. Carney, and he is not going to get it. Missouri shuts him down. Turnover on downs. As the big guy, 99, Simeon Sullivan from Blue Springs, the key guy on that play. And he is a big boy. <laughs> yeah, he fills up the screen, doesn't he? Couldn't be a nicer guy. Headed to Washburn. Looks like he's got it. And Sullivan just comes through and just leans on him. Gets him gets him around the waist, and he's not going any further. Fisher initially grabbed him, then Simeon finished him off. Fisher had the big sack on the drive as well. So Missouri's defense continues the shutout as their offense checks out on the field. You know, Kansas didn't, and they've come empty a couple times, but they're moving the ball, so they're still got to be pretty positive about their offense, and their defense just needs to step up and get the ball back. And flags fly as the ball snap. Blake Atkins, the quarterback from Pleasant Hill, joined in the backfield by Connery. Snap. Ball start on the offense, five yards, still first down. See Atkins, who's going to Mid America Nazarene University to play college football. Through for 2,400 yards, 24 touchdowns. This coach was honored before the game, Greg Smith from Pleasant Hill, formerly of Pleasant Hill. Atkins stepping up and finally tripped up by Matt Georgie, the Lawrence Free State outside linebacker. Well, and a great blitz, blitz pick up there by Patrick Connery to even spring that, because that looked like Atkins was going to be dead in the backfield. Connery steps up, and that's a guy who we haven't seen much of yet. He's a great between the tackle runners. That's something to think about. You know, the plan for him maybe later in the game, if they're ahead and they want to grind things out, get Connery out there and just kind of run between the tackles and be physical. Step back to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Quick pass over the middle to the Rockers tight end. Reed Levi for a short pickup. As we get yardage, about six yards on the play. Reed Levi going to Benedictine in Atchison. 
zone read, quick pass here. And Kansas does a pretty good job of not letting him break anything free, and that's, you know, held him to a short gain. You're, um, they've got a third and four, but uh, they definitely haven't gotten a quick first down. There's that empty set with five receivers deployed for Blake Atkins. The steps and throws in traffic, and it's broken up incomplete. It was an oh, odd yeah. blow. <laughs> Who were they looking for there? You take your pick. It looked like Reed Levi was the intended target. Like three, four people over there. Your guess is yellow, as good as mine. Gold and blue jerseys everywhere. And the incompletion sets up fourth down and four punting time for the Missouri All-Stars. Kansas gets the three and out just like they like. You know, we've seen some big offensive plays, but we've seen some good defense, too. And I think that... That's a testament to both these coaching staffs to have these teams ready. Ten days is not a lot of time. Punt away by Boyd. Another one off the side of his foot. Very poor effort. And this one going to backtrack. And it'll be a short field for the Kansas All-Stars. They'll get it at the 46-yard line. Only a 22-yard punt. I beg your pardon, 18-yard punt. And... Coach Lisher's flex bone offense going to check out on the field and try to get some points here. I kind of wonder, you know, if they had someone else punting or because if Frizzell just kicks, he doesn't punt. I think Boyd punted for Smithville, but he's had two rough efforts. But that's one of those things when you're wrestling in the winter and doing other things that you're not out punting and then you have to start practicing 10 games in. down the sidelines. Jake Fisher stole the pitch. The defensive end. That's how athletic this guy is from Smithville. Well, they were coming inside with Nathan Gray, and it looks like Fisher just released into the pitch lane because Gray stuffed that zone, the first read. What a fantastic play, and just the hands to do that, too. Well, we saw him see with the Gray, early Gray sack. creeping in, and it... And it the tight end releases Fisher, and he's gone. And he's a big athlete who can run. The tally's doing everything he can to. First down and goal for Missouri from the 10-yard That is a big momentum swing. Turnover number two by the Kansas All-Stars. 40 yards on the interception of a handoff by Jake Fisher and the scouting report, Dion, you mentioned, freak athlete, high motor player. This is the Van Horn quarterback, Sean Ross, cutting back <laughs> into the end zone, touchdown. Missouri All-Stars, 10 yards for Sean Ross of Van Horn. Talking with their coaches before the game, they wanted to get players like Sean Ross out into space. I told them, you know, I'd seen Sean play on film, I hadn't seen him live, and boy, he's even even more special live, and he made several people miss on that run for the touchdown to extend the lead from Missouri. Gavin Frizzell on to attempt the extra It's an all-star game, so Fisher has to come out and play the end. Yep. <laughs> and Frizzell from Carney knocks it through the uprights, and uh, Sean Ross was the runner of this group, and he showed it. Nice 10-yard touchdown run, but the big play by the big guy, Jake Fisher of Smithville. Been your hometown equipment, uniform, and decorating specialist for 59 years. We congratulate every player selected. Yeah, Fisher keys it big here, and you see Gray shoots it, and Fisher, the, the guard had to choose between Gray or Fisher. Fisher goes and, and just sticks his hand out and makes the big play. Thought he had a chance, and really it's a great tackle by Logan Tower there. And then Ross, stop. Another little stop there, and then just dives into the... His feet are just going the entire time. I mean, he's quick stepping the whole way through there. <laughs> yeah, he is... Uh, Great runner of the football, Sean Ross, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. He's very fast. He finished ninth in the state 100-meter dash. So this guy can flat out run. He's going to Fort Hayes State to play college football. Great program that they've got going down there. You can see what the coaching staff sees in this guy. He can really run 4-4-6 four, four, in the 40. Oh, 
home watching the game, you're looking for some live stats, go to PrepsKC.com, the PrepsKC app. We've got our live stats powered by Digital Scout. Live play-by-play -play up to date to see where the guys are. This one going to go out of play oh, for oh, a oh, it must have touched on, flag. It must have touched on the edge because it looked like it danced down the line. Check in now with Nick with the uh, big star from Smithville, Jake Fisher. Well, I think that's officially a fumble recovery, but if you want it to be an interception, we could probably mark it as so. Tell us about the play. Uh, coach, send me a nice set up one. It's uh, three turnovers by <laughs> And, well, I got a sack and a fumble, so. That's it. That's a good start to the game, and, and obviously you're building uh, some friendships and some camaraderie with guys. Tell us about the week. Uh, it's been fun meeting new players and then a couple of players we're going to play in college with. So just meeting new people, playing new people, it's fun time. Hey, best of luck the rest of the game. Thank you. That's Jake Fisher, guys. Back up to you. Thanks, Nick. First and ten from the 35 with the ball being kicked out of bounds. So the penalty is good yardage set up for the Kansas All-Stars who have two turnovers. And Missouri has converted both for touchdowns. Bennett with a short touchdown run and then Ross a 10-yard touchdown run as here's Carney, the lengthy east back, taken down by Boyd, another Smithville player at the 39-yard line. He of about three or four on that inside run. You know, one of the things that's, that's fun about these All-Star games, and sometimes you get a team like Smithville that has three or four kids on it, and they make big impacts in this game. A couple years ago, center, when they ran to the quarterfinals, had three kids in the game, and they really made an impact in the game. You could, you could find out when there's multiple guys from one team how, why those teams were good in a given season. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. Pitch it out, nice cutback run. And close to the uh, first down, should have it, is Eric Olson from Blue Valley High School. Yeah, those pitches have worked pretty well with the exception of the one that went to Fisher. And Olson did a good job there of getting the shoulders turned upfield and gets a good positive yard for a first down. First down and 10 from the 47 yard line. Played linebacker and running back for the Blue Valley Tigers in the Eastern Kansas League. First down and 10, LeBoyne. Five-step drop, now looking deep down the field. His receiver makes the catch, Sammy Macklin, but out of bounds, incomplete. Really, Khalil Smith did a good job of using the boundary there to keep, you know, as an extra defender. Second down and 10. Little, little, you know, mixing things up, going in the air and first down. And well, this is the offense that St. Thomas Aquinas ran and won their first ever state championship last fall. As Carney powers off the right side, and it's a good run across midfield and down to the 47-yard line. So again, about six. And the Olathe East running back headed to Wayne State College up in Nebraska. And now we're going to get a Missouri All-Stars timeout. They're first. As you take a look at the young head coach of Van Horn in his late 30s, but this guy brings the energy and doing a great job. Coaching Van Horn. If you haven't been to Van Horn lately, they've done a lot of upgrading there. Their stadium is very nice. They upgraded their uh, locker room. Doing a lot of things there in the independent school district with Van Horn High School. Yeah, they took over that school from uh, Kansas City almost 10 years ago. In 2010? Yeah, 2000, 2010, 2009, 2010. And um, it's, it's been, you know, a lot of time and patience going in to make that better. And, uh, uh, good friend of mine, Justin Woods, is the principal there. A shout out to him, and uh, he's he's put a lot of work into that school um, as an assistant principal and now the head principal in the, the district as well. And, and that east, that Western Independence part of town is is one of those parts that gets forgotten a lot of times. But um, they're trying to build a community out there, and and Coach Harris and what he's done with that football program is a big part of it. Let's check in now. Speaking of Van Horn, with the Van Horn quarterback with Nick. Yeah, guys, Sean Ross has made a couple of plays tonight, uh, including that last touchdown. Tell us about the play. Um, just caught a jet, and I was looking at the linebacker's eye before I snapped the ball, and he was looking at the jet guy, so I'm like, if I keep this, I'm going to go inside, and I'm going to bring it outside because I know there's receivers out there. So, all about 
know where to go with it. You've got four quarterbacks on this roster, but uh, they're getting you guys all uh, ro rotated in. You guys have different strengths. Uh, what's it been like uh, trying to share some snaps with these guys? It's been it's been really cool, like seeing different local quarterbacks around, knowing that you know it's really good comp, really good competition around, or let me not say competition, but skill around, and yeah, just learning from others. And final question for you. You were part of a big turnaround at Van Horn. I feel like you got your own water headed in the right direction. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, they, they, just seen, they just see me out here, and I feel like we're going to have some more OCAN players from Van Horn here next year. Awesome. Best of luck the rest of the game. Appreciate it. That's Sean Ross, guys. Back up to you. Well, the flex bone starting to click a little bit. We saw the big uh, Billy Conaway run, followed by a nice run by Cameron Jackson of St. Thomas Aquinas. The big hit from Khalil Smith of Fort Osage. Uh, everybody, uh, you're, you're going to no come on for the wear. Yeah, if you're going to come on Khalil Smith's side, you're going to get hit. But it's the pitches. It's the outside play. It's really kind of getting it going. Lemoyne pitching it out. Jackson stumbles, makes the catch. Grabbed immediately by Christian Johnson, the uh, Raytown cornerback. Yeah, I think that pitch is a little out in front of Jackson. He really never got his speed underneath him, or he might have had enough speed to get to the outside edge. And uh, Johnson just comes up and makes the play and does a good job of keeping them at third and uh, about, I don't know, a long two, you think? Short two? Yeah. Johnson was a question mark. He plays Ban Johnson baseball. He got hit in the face with a ball oh. as he was. Moving in to slide into second base. The second base hit him in the side of the face with the ball, and he said, problem is putting on my helmet. You know, my face is sore. Is this pitch to Sturdy, and he'll have to dive on it, and they'll lose yardage back to the 26. So it'll be a loss of five. So now it's going to be fourth, time, uh, fourth down and decision time for the all-stars from Kansas still uh, looking at a goose egg on the board here. Well, the thing that they've done the last couple of plays is they're getting into Raboyne just enough to force that pitch a little quick so it hasn't been quite as clean, which has enabled the defense to get out there. They're going to try a long field goal by Lake. This would be a new career long. 42 is his career long. He missed from 31 earlier. Hits it well, but no good as he hooked it left. Line drive, plenty of distance, just kind of hooked it there. So he's 0 for 2 in the ball game is Cameron Lake, the Lawrence Free State kicker. Well, missed opportunities right now for Kansas. They've had two turnovers and two missed field goals. So no points on the board here in the first half with 5.15 left to go in the second quarter. Coming up, Hy-Vee at the half. Highlights and our stats brought to you by your employee-owned Hy-Vee stores. Where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Good to be in Olathe. Fantastic facility here at Seaback. Thanks to the Olathe School District. Oh, yeah. Pat Butler, the AD at Olathe West, has been a great host for this. And Mike Zagunas, the president of the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association, coaches at Olathe West. Here's Roderick Smith. Not much doing off the left side. Blue jerseys there to cut him off. That is EJ Jusum, the Lawrence defensive lineman. He's a load. He's a big guy. Yeah. 5'11, yeah. 290. Going to Butler Community College. Now you like those fire plug inside defensive linemen. Very active, though. It's to study music engineering. College days. Check in now with wanna... Nick uh, prior to this uh, second down play. Well, guys, I'm standing here behind these down markers, and I don't know if you've noticed these things on the far side. I, I assume we'll get a camera shot of these things, but they are digital down markers. We brought technology to something as simple as a down marker, and it works. They have to press a button to say what down it is, but then based on where he stands, the yardage is automatically calculated. It's a company called Laser Down that comes out and does this. Apparently they were here last year, but what, what a cool innovation that they're bringing to the sidelines for Friday nights, guys. Yeah, it's a it's a neat product, and uh, they, were they were at Leavenworth last year for the first time, and um, I was on the sidelines last year with Leavenworth, and really, in the stands, it's great. I mean, it's a great spot to be, to see those digital down marks. Well, with the penalty, it'll be second down and 15. Quarterback is Samatsik from Smithville, and he will 
will float this one to the sideline. Almost kept it in play. The Kansas. <laughs> yeah, the Kansas guys were, were trying to close on that and yeah. make a play. And the Kansas defense has played decently well because they got the turnover that allowed Missouri to get one of those scores. And well, you see on the Missouri side, it's a tradition on the Missouri team. They, I don't think they're allowed to do it in Kansas. Uh, the trading of the stickers. And so a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of different stickers, a lot of different schools on the helmets. Guys are asked to bring their home stickers and the guys trade them. Cover their helmets. Pass outside to Harold Trainer from Grandview. And a nice play by Goody on the linebacker from Aquinas. Trailing from behind. Makes the tackle. And it'll be fourth down to punting time for the Missouri All-Star. Well, and a big stop there for the Kansas defense. They're pinned up. They, they got a penalty. They kept him in that spot. They're on the 14-yard line now. Uh, Boyd has not hit his punts very well. I mean, we're talking about 18 to 20 yard punts. They could very easily get this ball back inside the 40. They got 336 left to go. Uh, and they need to be able to get this ball back and try and get some kind of points on the board here before the half is over. Well, Boyd has struggled. The Smithville linebacker running back. Put down at 16. And this one nearly blocked. But this is another short punt that takes a Kansas roll and is down near the 31 yard line. So this one goes for 17, so Boyd's average right around the 18 to 20 mark that Dion mentioned. It's not getting any better for him, and Kansas got the short field just before halftime. Uh, they've, they've got to find a way to get, you know, they've, they've got plenty of time here in three minutes, but they can't be just so deliberate in their offense. They need to be, you know, playing with a little bit of you know, up-tempo here and try and get some yardage, because three minutes with that flex bone, you can run four plays sometimes. <laughs> Like L.J. Brown from Blue Valley North nearly got the block there. For Boyne and the flex bone, McQuillan is the fullback. Conaway and Jackson are the wings. Inside running play, McQuillan nothing doing as he's tackled by Sullivan of Blue Springs. Now, Sullivan's done a pretty good job of wrapping him up underneath. And and all these things set things up. So even if you're not getting big yardage up the middle, you'll be able to fake that and go outside and quarterback keeper himself. Kansas badly needed points here. As this has been their big play guy, Billy Conaway Jr. And there he goes, Billy, first and goal inside the five. Great speed by the Shawnee Mission North Indian. Yeah, I think that they've got to find ways to get him the ball on the outside as many times as they can. I know you want to mix it up, but there's a good block there on the outside. But tally, and he just burst through. And boy, for, you know, he's a muscular, physical runner, and he finishes runs, and that's really impressive about a guy who's, you know, got a lot of receiving yards last year. 26 yards, first and goal from the three yard line. Kansas has two timeouts left to approach halftime of this all-star game. Quarterback keeps it, and into the end zone goes Tate Raboyne, the St. Thomas Aquinas quarterback. Well, when we talk about Conway, 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 well, they went with the pitch man, and Raboyne had an easy step into the end zone. Kansas has to feel good about that drive. I said they needed urgency, but they only took a minute off the clock. <laughs> Missouri's going to have a chance to run a little two-minute offense here. Coach Dustin Delaney running the offense for Coach Lisher right by his side. As there's Cameron Lake. An attack on the extra point. Yes, yeah. And it is up and good, 14-7. The St. Thomas Aquinas quarterback who led them to their first ever state championship under Coach Dryling uh, gets first points for the Kansas All Stars. He does a great job there of just forcing Daniel Booker from St. Joe Benton to make a choice. Make a choice. And he went with the pitch guy, and Reborn just walks it in for the touchdown. Whether it's your back, 
That's what that's designed to do. Make people make choices. Three plays, 31 yards, 25 of which by the Conaway run. Ramoyne, his father, Tony, is a coach. Which is the freshman there for the Saints. This guy had the best quarterback rating in Kansas. Going to UCM to play college football. Kicking off for Kansas will be number 26, Cameron Lake. Back deep for Missouri. Turning when you watch an MIAA game. Number 20, John Eldridge. See those rosters. It's just Kansas City Metro players all over the place. Cameron Lake from Lawrence Free State. We'll send this one. Nine yards deep to really drive those kickoffs. It'll be a touchback first and 10 from the 20. Tough night for Cameron on the field goal attempts, 0 for 2. Been a little sore this week, he said. A young man that was injured during his senior year had that surgery. The offense checking out, it'll be Alex Rausch of Liberty at the helm. Bennett in there beside him. Yeah. Bennett has a touchdown run of three yards. Sean Ross, the Van Orn quarterback, the other touchdown run for Missouri. Roush turns, throws, his receiver never looked for the ball. It's Dylan Gilbert of Black County. Yeah, it looked like that there was some kind of read there that maybe either Gilbert didn't make or Roush did. Gilbert headed to Washburn. Playing with his running mate Bryce Bertrand. A couple of Black County wide receivers on the Missouri All Stars roster. Second down and 10. Bennett, and he is grabbed immediately. As nice play by Sage Seperta, the Mill Valley linebacker. Yeah, they read that pretty quick, and Seperta was all over it. This guy had over 250 tackles during his career going to Emporia State. You see, you see Kansas take a timeout here with a minute 44. If you hold them here, you're looking again. The punting game has is, is been suspect, and they've got a chance to get on the short field. If you have one yep. Billy Conway Jr. pitch away from getting inside the 10, it looks like. His speed is too much to the edge for the Missouri defense. Well, and his physicality. He runs through tackles, and he finishes runs. Yep. Let's check in now with uh, Nick and uh, one of our Hall of Fame class of 2019 members, Dirk Webb. Yeah, uh, Dion, he says hi. I'm here with Coach Dirk Webb, the longtime Lawrence head coach. He's waving at you, he says. So, uh, Coach, uh, you're getting honored uh, tonight. Tremendous honor uh, heading into the Hall of Fame for the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association. Unbelievable. Uh, it's just, you know, a tribute to... Uh, a great family, wife uh, at the best high school in the state, <laughs> prejudice, uh, alma mater, and then having great assistants and great players. It, it all comes together, and, and I don't think I ever worked a day in my life. <laughs> so. There's a Lawrence has got a pretty distinguished history, and yet you ended up being the longest tenured head coach there in Lawrence uh, High School history. 104 wins for you. Uh, just talk a little bit about. You know, it's hard to synthesize in just a few sentences, but talk about your time there, at Lawrence. Well, again, uh, <laughs> a lot, I missed a lot of bullets. <laughs> That's how you stay there long. But uh, again, uh, it's just a great program. And, you know, when you when you look at the people that are in the Hall of Fame, you know, Coach Al Wollard was my coach, and then followed by Coach Freeman, and then followed by Coach Purdy. Uh, you know, Coach Rampy's there now, so it's unbelievable the the people that have gone through that program and kept it at, at a high level. So it's just you know you're, you're humble to be at that school and, and humble to be here tonight. A lot of consistency there in Lawrence at the two high schools, and both of you guys have retired here recently. Yeah, Bobby's going in uh, tonight also, and he, he's got his hands full right now. But, um, you know, again, uh, he 
he played for my father, uh, who was a junior high coach. And uh, so that's, you know, we, we've been friends for forever. And, and tell us about uh, what you're doing now. You headed over to the University of Kansas. Yeah, uh, I went over uh, last year with Coach Beatty as an analyst, a defensive analyst. And then this year, Coach Miles uh, hired me back and, and uh, as a director of high school relations. So, uh, you know, I get to... I get to go to work every day and be around, you know, great people and a great staff. And Coach Miles is so special. And he's he's definitely a Hall of Famer. Well, Coach, it's great to run into you. And congratulations on the Hall of Fame honor. And uh, great speaking with you. Oh, great. Thank you for having me. That's Coach Dirk Wegg, guys. Back up to you. Congratulations to the coach. Big defensive play by Nishan Houston of uh, Sumner Academy. Batting the ball away from Harold Trainer. It would have been a long pass down the field. Now it's fourth and 11. Yeah, that's a huge play for that Kansas defense, and uh, now they're forcing another punt, and, and Boyd's going to see what he can do. This one blocked, picked up by the Kansas All-Stars, and taken in. That is Christian Roth of Mill Valley, who got the block, got the scoop, and the score, and Kansas right back in this one. Well, it looked like Boyd was going to try and do a more of a rugby-style kick on this one. Stepped outside, and Roth was kind of on the outside of the wedge, and he just ran right into it, it dropped to his feet. Picked it up and ran it in. Big play here at the end of the half. It was 14-0 all Missouri four minutes ago. See Roth come around the outside and Boyd, Boyd just kind of goes right into him. He was kind of lined up on the outside of the wedge anyway. An extra point. Ties it at 14. So 14 unanswered by the Kansas All-Stars. And we are locked up at 14, Dion, as we approach Hy-Vee at the half. Well, and when Roth came around there, Cade Hampton looked in his mind like he just needed to get in an arm, like, like maybe Boyd was going to, you know, kicking away to the left, not coming around the outside. A, a, the, the snap may have taken Boyd over there, I don't know, but he looked like when he got it, he was looking to go more rugby style because he kind of struggled with his first two punts. Well, the prior punt was nearly blocked by L.J. Brown, but this time Christian Roth is going to Pittsburgh State to play football and study plastics engineering. It's a special team score on the block punt. And able to take it in, 5'10", 247 pounds. Haven't been playing football that long. Said he started playing as a ninth grader. That was the first time he ever played football, but he loves it. Well, you know, Coach Harold Walmsgans told me a few years ago that his attitude was, if you go be an athlete, you come to me when you're in ninth grade, I'll make you football. And there's a lot of people who think you got to start playing tackle in kindergarten. I think if you go out and be an athlete, you can still be a football player in high school. And, that, and Christian Ross is definitely a guy who shows that. Lake bombs another one down the field. This one out of the end zone. He has a strong leg as the kicker from Lawrence Free State. But yeah, Roth, great all around athlete, a track athlete. Got fourth place in the shot put. And we're going to check in with another future Hall of Famer. Here's Scott Wright from Blue Valley West. Yeah, guys, uh, here with Scott Wright, the longtime Blue Valley assistant and Blue Valley West head coach. And, Coach, congratulations on the honor going into the Hall of Fame tonight. Thanks. It's, uh, it's an exciting night. I'll be honest with you. I think they got the wrong guy. But anyway, it's an exciting night. It's going to be fun. You had some pretty su uh, good success there at Blue Valley West, starting a program from scratch. What was that experience like? Well, you know, it's it, we, we kind of went from a program that had been established for a long time at Blue Valley High to start one. And we kind of just tried to take some of the stuff that we had at high and take it over there. And uh, fortunately, we came from a really good program and we had some good ideas. And Steve helped me a lot to get things going. And so, yeah, but it was it was exciting. It, it, it's funny for, for the fans and such. There, there's a, a natural rivalry, obviously, when, when a, a new school opens up in the school district. But as, as I see so often happens in the coaching community, those old, old guys, you, you're still a very close-knit community. And as you mentioned, Coach Rampey was one of the biggest helps. I suppose that you're arch rival. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about that is you, you know you got to tee it up once a year with those guys. And that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. And we, we enjoyed some great games with each other. But... Uh, yeah, just, it's just all the memories come back. 
all the memories. Update us on what you're doing. I am still at West, uh, not coaching. I'm doing the weight room, still doing the strength and conditioning stuff. Really enjoying that, and uh, still get to be around athletes. But I don't have to. I don't have to make a starting lineup. I don't have to do any of that. So it's. I'm enjoying it. Well, best of luck to you and uh, enjoy tonight. Thanks a lot. I will. All right, thanks, guys. Back up to you. Yeah, almost a big play. Another big play there for Missouri. And, you know, they, they look like they had gotten a big swing there. Roderick Smith <laughs> comes around the outside. It looks like maybe he's going to get stopped in the backfield. Somebody got some jersey. And yeah, got some jersey. There, yeah. And just stepped out of bounds, and it's all coming back. And really, if you're Missouri at this point, with 48 seconds left, you don't want to turn it over here, and you really don't want to punt. Kansas has one timeout left. They may make them use it. Jet sweep it with Eldridge, the speedster from Lee Summit North, now reversing his path, and he's going to be taken down by Lampers, and he fumbles the football into the end zone, and Kansas has it. What a turnaround as it's Quarlo, the Lawrence Free State Firebird, who picks up the loose ball. Lampers spun him around, fumbled the football to Eldridge, and Squarlow picks it up. And just like that, 21 unanswered points in a couple of minutes here, Dion. I don't know if you can play as make as many mistakes as Missouri has made in the last two minutes and 45 seconds. Wow. I mean, just put the ball on the ground, get a punt blocked, a short punt. Wow, that's unbelievable. And Kansas gets the ball to start the second half. And another extra point. Right through the Eldridge three was trying three. to do too much, make too much happen there around his own goal line. There was a he, he was in danger of a safety before he fumbled the ball. Yeah, the question well, he I had was whether he path. Would, yeah. I, I'd like to see if he was down before he went down, but the officials were right there. There's seven of them out there, so I, I doubt that they would miss that. I mean, here it is. He, he, he runs into his blocker because Squarlow's beating the play up, up top. He's going, he's spinning, he's fighting. Almost looked like it came out on the, on the ground, but who knows? Let's see. This might be a little better one. Squarlow blew it up to begin with. Well, it was out before he came down. And then Lampers spins him and Unbelievable. Nick, you were right down there. What'd you see? Yeah, guys, I, I thought in real time it was a great call. I thought he was going to go down, but the ball definitely came loose before he went down. Uh, it looked like it was just going to be a big loss, and they were going to be pinned back at the one or the two. And the ball came out late, and uh, gosh, Kansas has capitalized on another big play. Shane Scorglow with, uh, with the big recovery. Just a few minutes ago, it was 14 nothing Missouri. They were rolling. They had, oh, they had the brailing. 21 to 14 as this late guy is finding his rhythm on these kickoffs. They had three and a half, four minutes. They stopped him, left. They got the ball back. It was like they had time to do one more drive to maybe make it 21 to nothing. They get stopped, short punt, score. They get the ball back again, go to punt. They get stopped, go to punt, blocked. Get the ball back again. And I don't, I, you know, trying to run some sideline stuff when you really almost need to run to the middle of the line to force it out so you maybe don't have to punt. And then craziness happens and you give up a fumble for, into the end zone for a touchdown. Two timeouts left for Missouri. Coming up, Hyvee at the half. Numbers and highlights as Roush, the Liberty quarterback, flushed. Now throwing down the field. Jalen Scruggs, all kinds of coverage on Fisher, the Smithville wide receiver, incomplete. Well, that's one thing we haven't really talked about are the defensive backs for Kansas. Jalen Shrugg, Stephon Camp. Stephon Camp, I mean, I'm telling you, they've got all kinds of guys who can run and, and make plays. And, and now Missouri's finding itself in a position where they're down to the flex bone. Uh, if they, you know, they got 30 seconds left in the half, they're going to have to come out and play defense to start the second half. Big mistakes here at the end of the half for Missouri has totally changed the complexion of this game. Running play, Jonas Bennett. Uh, nice play by Squarlow, who just had the end zone fumble recovery. Kansas is going to burn their final time out here. So they think they can get it back. Tech by Kansas, number 56, oh, Paul penalty. Beasley. Flag is down. Penalty on the field. 
Personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yards, well, first down. I think uh, Kansas hopes are dashed. This will yeah. be enough for a first down. Jarris handling the defense. Benny Palmer, Winnetonka head coach, former Kearney quarterback, won two state championships under Mark Thomas, who also will go into the Hall of Fame at halftime here. First and 10 from the 36 yard line, down to 20 seconds in your second quarter. This is the Swiss Army knife of this squad. Jonas Bennett, who does have a touchdown run, picking up a couple of yards. And that's going to do it for the first half. What a strange first half, Dion Cristo. <laughs> Dominated for all but three minutes, basically, by Missouri. And then Kansas turns it around right at the end. It's worth 21 on answer. Crazy. 21-14 is your halftime score. The Kansas All-Stars leading the Missouri All-Stars as you're watching the 28th annual BUnion.com Kansas versus Missouri All-Star High School football game. Here from Seaback in Olathe. And we're back with Hy-Vee at the half. Numbers and highlights just around the corner. Stay tuned. at the half in the 2019 Kansas versus Missouri BUnion.com All-Star football game and we check in now with Nick. Which, uh, gosh what a turnaround there in the last few minutes uh, you guys scored 21 unanswered to take the lead here at halftime. Well we came up with some big plays there uh, and we needed them being down 14 to nothing but our kids are resilient. You know, they're All-Stars for a reason. Uh, Missouri's pretty good. I think our guys are pretty good. It's turned into a pretty good game. I'll ask you quickly about your retirement uh, this uh, last off season, uh, and you're headed. Uh, well, you're you're going to still coach over there across the state line of William Crisp. Yeah, I'm going to the Missouri side now. Retired in Kansas, and, uh, and time to head across the field or across the state line and coach over there for a while. And your quick thoughts on getting inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight? Well, I've had a lot of great players and uh, assistant coaches and people around me forever, so it's a great honor for them as well. Well, congratulations on that honor tonight, and good luck the rest of the game, Coach. Thank you. That's Bob Lisher, guys. Back up to you. Now he leaves uh, Nick and heads to get in line for the All-Star Hall of Fame halftime ceremony, and congratulations to all of them there, the families of the uh, coaches, families and friends. Uh, getting all lined up, Dion. Uh, a good class here. We got going in yeah you do and you, know, you get the Don Cobb is the first one and I tell you it's really a good one um, Lee Flappin from Pembroke Hill Ed Russell William Christman Bob Lisher of course and Dirk Wed kind of going in together I think that's a really good deal Mark Thomas from Odessa Jeff Gorley from uh, Belton and Olathe South and you know they've been doing this since 2015 and I tell you it, it's it's really a, a neat deal um, that the Coach Association has done and, and a nice night for their families they have a little reception beforehand and I remember the first year they did it was like 25 people because they did pioneer coaches and um, it's it's filling up but it's it's a I, I go to those coaches board me coach association board meetings and they talk about this they really honor the guys who came before them the coaches association is so strong in fact it's it's one of the best in the country and that's not just people sitting here beating their chest they go to national conventions and the people in the national they're recognized at the national convention for what they do and, and I think you see this all-star game you see this Hall of Fame you see the McCarthy Auto Group scholar program that they do uh, and this is really a, a a great way to have all these things kind of tie together and um, this Hall of Fame has been fantastic to see and you know you, you get some for some of these people you know they, they haven't had their name called out in a long time and it really it really allows them to 
uh, have one more night and introduce what they've done. You know, some of these guys, hey, I didn't even know. I, I'm, I'm reading these bios. Ed Russell, who was at William Christmas in Blue Springs, you know, did the run and shoot when it first got going. And it's funny because they kind of went away for, from it until Wayne McGinnis brought it back at, at Blue Springs. And, uh, and uh, you know, they were very successful. That's where we kind of got the Blue Springs thing going. So, you know, it's a lot of... It's a, it's a lot of just honoring people who have been the benchmarks and the, and the builders of the programs. So then, you know, you've been around football for a long time, and you're starting to see guys that, that you've covered uh, now going to Hall of Fame. I know that makes us older, doesn't it, Kevin? Yes. <laughs> I, I feel old, and uh, then Nick has another Hall of Famer with him. Uh, former Olathe North head coach Gene Weir. Yeah, guys, from the inaugural class. And, uh, Coach, uh, what have you been up to? Is It's good to see you out here tonight. Well, actually, uh, going back on the sideline a little bit over William Christmas, very excited. Really appreciate the opportunity they provided for us. Yeah, you were at uh, you were at KU the last few years, but obviously regime change there. You're getting back into the high school ranks. Uh, it's got to be exciting for you. It is. You know, I'm with uh, some of my closest friends, you know, John McCall, Bob Lesher here, and Jeff Myers. And, you know, and there's good kids over there, some good coaches at Christmas. Just it's, it looks very positive. And, it's pretty similar to, say, a 2002 uh, Sunflower League all-star coaches, all-conference coaches meeting over there now. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And they'll start yakking a little bit, but uh, I just kind of look at it. It's still getting that, ar it's still getting that argument. Uh, you always like coming out to, to this event, I know, and uh, it's good to see you on the sidelines here tonight. What, what do you think this event uh, is for, for the community and for high school football players in our city to be recognized one last time? You know, I, I think it's great for them. There's, you know, we've had that conversation several years when I was on the board. We inaugurated this game, and it gives kids another chance to play high school football, and they have a blast of playing. And so, I don't I think it's just a win-win. Uh, any thoughts on, uh, I know you coached against Coach Lisher and Coach Wed, uh, uh, in particular, uh, another great Hall of Fame class this year. It is. You know, those are good men out there that, you know, I sat in on a meeting where they were discussing, you know, everything they'd done. And, you know, what always stood out was is how good they were with kids. You know, so very well deserving for those men. Coach, it was great to visit with you again, and we'll look forward to seeing you on Friday nights again. All right. We'll do. God willing, I'll be there. <laughs> All right, guys, back up to you. All right, thanks, uh, Nick. Uh, I, I heard somebody ask Coach Lisher, uh, he went to his first coaches meeting away of Christmas, who gets the word in edgewise? He goes, I don't know. There's a lot of talking going on <laughs> yeah, with all those veteran coaches there. Jeff Myers and John McCall over there, too. And, uh, you know, those are guys who have, have fought the wars and, and uh, still want to get back and help help kids, and, and that's great. I think that that if you could have a staff with some veteran guys like that on there, uh, there, there's it really helps the young people, the young coaches, to kind of see that kind of mix. And you know, this last year, two years, the coaches associate have done something that doesn't get a lot of play. Um, they've done a, a young coaches academy where assistant coaches can come and uh, go to meetings and and uh, they, they have like pro it's like a, it's like a school. I mean, they have like a project they have to come up with, like mission statements and uh, you know things like that. And several members who have graduated through that academy, it's like a five five night thing. They are um, out here on these staffs, and they're trying to encourage them to be on the staffs. And it really is kind of like cultivating that next group of, of coaches who are out there. And it really is a, a fantastic thing. And that was spearheaded by Kevin Keaton, who coached at Oak Park and coached at Belton. He's now up at St. Joseph Benton. He's on the board. And, uh, that's another thing that they do. And, uh, you know, they, they do so much in terms of, of just helping to promote the game. That's their, their goal, promote the game of football here in Kansas City but they're trying to make better men, whether it's a high school player or it's a, a, an assistant coach. Hyvie at the half will continue. We'll get to your numbers and highlights brought to you by your employee-owned Hyvie Sports. You're watching the Hyvie High School Game of the Week on Spectrum Sports. Welcome back to Hyvie at the half. Well, Missouri got off to the great start, leading 14 and nothing. Things were looking bleak for Kansas until the final two minutes, where they scored three times. They lead a 21-14 at the break. Time now for the High V first half highlights. And for Preps KC, here's Dion Busso. Well, Sean Ross here has a, a big run that really sets up the first score for Missouri. And you see his speed when he gets to the outside and really a, a touchdown saving tackle. And then they just go to Jonas Bennett, who's just a power back. Boy, talk about straight ahead runner. 
does a little bit of everything for Odessa. And then Fisher here with the steal of the pitch, almost runs it in, but Logan Talley stays step for step with him to save it. And then Ross again, with a, he got the outright speed, but the quickness and the darting of the feet, the touchdown at that point, it's all Missouri, looking good. Billy Conaway has been a big weapon for Kansas here. He makes a big play here, gets them inside the five yard line, and then Tate Warren makes it 14 7 with about three minutes to go. And the big block punt by Christian Roth. And just like that, a minute later, we're tied. And it gets even crazier. John Eldridge dancing around, gets back around the goal line, has to keep from the safety, but fumbles it. And Squarlow from Lawrence Free State. Makes it in for the touchdown. Well, you expect Kansas to lead on the stat sheet and the rushing yards. And they've had the two turnovers that hurt. Anything that stands out on the uh, stat sheet there, Dion? Well, you know, the rushing yards, 190 jumps off the page at you, which really shows that in the first half, Kansas was moving the ball. They had a couple turnovers and they had a couple missed field goals. This could be really, with a burst of 21 points, this could be a lot. Um, you know, a lot better score. Missouri had done a good job defensively in making things happen. So I, I think that if you're Missouri, you just got to wipe away. You got a nice long halftime to kind of wipe that away. Maybe you wanted to get right back out there at it. But with the difference in the rushing yards, you've got to stop them coming out of it. Because we talked about it all game long. Do not get behind a flex bone team because they will three yard you, three yard you, four yard you, three yard you to death, and you just won't get the ball back. Their halftime score 21 14, Kansas on top. And again, we'll check in with Nick with another special guest down on the field. Yeah, guys, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks out working on the field, so I had to settle on Sam Kanopic, my old friend from Pembroke Hill. He's the head coach there, and he's the immediate past president of the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association. And uh, I know you put in, as your as your departing gift, this uh, the order for this weather here tonight. It was, it's pretty nice. It, it, it is nice, and I was telling Coach Zagunas, who's uh, taking over as the president for this thing, that he's getting off easy, not dodging any lightning bolts and worried about heat stroke. All he's got to do is shake hands and look pretty. So we're not complaining. Yeah, even the weather all, all week for practices and stuff has been uh, very nice, uh, unusually mild for this time of year in these parts. So that's been that's been fortunate. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about uh, the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association and, and what this uh, this night and this Hall of Fame is uh, is all meaning. Right. So um, you know the game's been a long-standing tradition in the area, uh, going back to the early days of this association in the in the uh, early mid '80s. And so for the, for the game to still be this big and this competitive uh, is a lot of fun and then we're in our uh, fifth Hall of Fame class this summer and um, uh, they're they're introducing uh, uh, these Hall of Famers right now as we speak and, and Lynn Dickey's bringing up the rear on this thing as our Hall of Fame area uh, player inductee uh, this summer and um, it's just a great um, uh, another layer that's been put on this event and uh, our association is really proud of it and gives these families something to um, really uh, uh, celebrate uh, with their with their dads and husbands and, and, and uh, former coaches and so it's really special. And on Father's Day weekend no less and, and uh, I'm sure you're right that that it's really even uh, more of an issue for for the families a chance to celebrate that that loved one and these families are obviously uh, you know it as well as anyone uh, the coaches have to their whole families have to kind of sacrifice for you guys to do what you do. Absolutely, and um, w before the event, we, we gather for a little reception, and, and uh, one of the things that we mentioned to these guys is we thank them for all of, uh, all the influence they've had on their former players and all the different communities they've been in. And a lot of these guys have coached um, multiple places outside the greater Kansas City area, a lot of them. And, and uh, so, so we hope that, um, you know, this, uh, you know, this honor and this recognition um, represents all that they've done and all those lives that they've touched. And, and of course, their family's um, uh, uh, effort in that endeavor as well. I don't want to lump you in with uh, with these old timers, but you've been at Pembroke Hill now for quite a while. How many years is this? Uh, I wasn't a math major. I've been, I've been there since fall of 03, but this is a this is a big night for Pembroke Hill. We've got uh, Nathan Barrowins uh, playing linebacker for the Missouri team tonight. Uh, former uh, coach Lee Flappin was inducted tonight. Uh, Lee passed away in 2012, but his uh, family's here tonight and uh, former players, and um, that's been really great for our community for sure. Well, Coach, it's always good to catch up with you. Good to see you, and uh, thanks for spending some time with us. Yep, thank you. Thanks for what you guys do for high school football. Appreciate it, Nick. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. That's Sam Kanopic, the head coach at Pembroke Hill, and 
the past president of the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association, guys. Yeah, they can, they're coming off a great year last year, 11-1, and one, and only the third undefeated regular season in school history. And Coach Kanopic and, you know, Pembroke Kill is not necessarily a football place, but they find some kids and they play well, and he's, he's intimately uh, been a part of this uh, association for a long time. He also serves on the National Federation High School, or the you know, American Football Federation High School Board. Uh, so he, he is a big part of what uh, football is here in the city and, and uh, one of the guys who really puts in a lot of work and effort uh, for the association for football. Scott Wright there, getting his honor tonight. Congratulations. Thomas. Yeah, Coach Thomas. Uh, Benny. Uh, He's taken uh, three different teams to the state championship game, one over two different. Uh, Boonville, and I remember those years they were never very good, and Coach Thomas came back to Boonville, took them to a state championship, then he moved on to Kearney, won two. One of the best class four teams in the history of the state. I mean, the Web City teams are, are up there. I, I put those two Kearney teams, they went back to back in 2002 and 2003 up there with just about any class four team in the state of Missouri. And, uh, that was a, I can remember being down at the Dome that year, and uh, they won the class four, Blue Springs won the class six, and, Harrisonville won the class three, and that was that was some good Kansas City. I think Park Hill won the class five, and that was that's a that was a pretty dominant, <laughs> pretty dominant <laughs> Kansas City year and, and down at the uh, Missouri State Championships. Of course, he's here watching uh, his former quarterback, Benny Palmer, run the offense for the Missouri All Stars. More of Ivy at the half coming your way as you're watching the Ivy High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. We continue with High V at the half, and Nick has the Missouri head coach, Coach Harris from Van Horn. All right, guys, uh, thank you very much. Indeed, here with Coach Harris. And, and Coach, I know the last three minutes, the first part of the game went exactly as planned, I think, but uh, the last three minutes, things got a little sideways. What did you guys talk about in the locker room? Uh, we made some adjustments, and uh, options started hurting us a little bit, so we made some adjustments to make sure we were clear on our responsibilities. Um, and we did some things to try to shore up our punt team as well. Yeah, special teams were kind of kind of the big issue that uh, that led to a little momentum for the Kansas side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, we just didn't block it, and guys didn't step the right way, so... All-star game issues, I'll chalk it up too, so hopefully we can get a fix in the second half and make it run. Speaking of all-star games, the, the entire focus isn't uh, obviously on the field tonight. Uh, tell us about your Van Horn Falcons. What a great year this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, we you know we had a good season this year. Uh, first playoff win in school history uh, under the current format. So uh, we think we're trending in the right direction. So we were 7-4 this year off of 4-7 season. So we switched the record around and we'll hope for, hope for better things this year too. All right, well, best of luck next year and best of luck the rest of the night. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's Coach Harris. Guys, all right, thanks, Nick. And the second half is just around the corner. You're watching the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week right here on Spectrum Sports. The Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week is brought to you by Hy-Vee, the official sponsor of High School Spirit. for the start of the third quarter second half kickoff Missouri going to get the football as Kansas won the opening coin toss and took the football Dion, you mentioned this to me in a break uh, the crowd here great crowd yeah. tonight here in Olathe this is a big stadium especially on the home side and, and it's almost I mean, the the south end is a little little light but pretty much all the way through there's people and the visiting stands is probably what two thirds full easily and that's, I mean, this is a great facility. We had great weather. Um, we appreciate everyone who's watching. <laughs> but it's a good night to get just get out and watch football, too. So it's, uh, you know, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Couldn't make it out here. We had it here on Spectrum. And, and uh, if you uh, were able to make it out, it was a great night. And you're, not, you're not sweltering hot. You're not worried about different stuff. And, well, Coach Harris talked to his guys. Late onslaught has Kansas on top 21 14 as we're ready for the start of the third quarter. Oh, I had it wrong. I thought Kansas was getting the ball. No, they decided to uh, take the opening coin toss and receive it. We've seen Lake bombing these kickoffs. So. He's a weapon. There's no doubt. You, you could say right now that that uh, they have won the kicking game. It, well, they missed two field goals, so that's what they're. But they, in terms of kickoffs and pinning them down deep in there, they're in.
in that first half, there was eight plays of 10 yards or more. Missouri had three of them. 32-yard run, a 10-yard run, and a 30-yard pass. And this one will get about a... Kansas had five of them, all runs, with a 60-yard run being the biggest. So lots of good... Lots of good big chunk plays in the first half. And I think we're just... I'm, I'm settled in here for a good second half. I think it's... Missouri defense has got some work cut out for them. The Kansas offense is starting to get, get things going. But the Kansas defense can't just slack down. They've, they've got to be ready to come out here and play strong because Missouri is definitely going to adjust and try and get the ball into their playmakers. Well, after another touchback by Lake, who's on a roll, that one was kind of a high arcing kick. The Alex Roush, the Liberty quarterback handing off to Patrick Connery from Liberty. A couple of Northland guys hooking up for well, a five-yard game. And we didn't see Connery that much in the first half. And I tell you, he's a, he's a between-the-tackles guy. He finishes runs, and he's strong. That could be a weapon for them that they haven't used yet. Well, he put up good numbers oh, there. Oh, yeah. 1,500 yards. First couple, game, first couple weeks of the season, it was like 200 yards a week. 29 total touchdowns, quick pass, and it's caught by Bennett, and that's a first down across the 30 to near the 34-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight yards. Jonas Bennett from Odessa. Well, they do the quick zone read fake to Connery, and they're able to find Bennett just out in the flat. And there's no one around him. And another quick hitter. I think that maybe tempo might be something that Missouri wants to play with here in the second. First down and 10 from Missouri from the 34-yard line. Shotgun formation, Connery remains to the right of the quarterback, and he's gonna get it, and he'll turn the corner, and, oh. that, and that's that's not necessarily his game, but he showed good speed to the outside, put his foot in the ground, and then went downhill, in a nice five, you know, four and a half yard gain for him on first down, and, and, and that's a good little rhythm they've got going here in the first four plays here, the first half, the second half. Let's check in now with Nick. Well, guys, there was a lot of fireworks there in the last few minutes, and I was on the wrong sideline. Tate Raboyne scored the game-tying touchdown. Uh, talk about the play. It was a, the regular option play to the left, triple option play, and I pulled the ball because defense came down. I cut the field right up and hope. I've seen you coaching some guys on the field. I know for a lot of these guys, your offensive teammates, it's maybe their first time running this system. You've been in it for a while. Uh, what's it been like to, to kind of try and be that coach on the field for to help implement this offense? It's been really fun being coach drawing systems for the last four years, so it's kind of nice. I get to take ownership and know what know what the system and know where the gaps are help with the linemen. Last thing, tell us about your plans for the future. I'm playing football at Uni University of Central Missouri. Well, best of luck to you, and uh, good luck the rest of the night. Thank you. That's Taylor Boyne, guys. Big third down and six. Thanks, Nick. And uh, they swing it out to Bennett in space. And he uses the stiff arm. This is what athletes do in space, Dion. They get first downs. Jonas Bennett. Well, he got a stiff arm and a little stutter step there. And the defensive back lost his footing. And Jonas Bennett getting him out there and a little quick hitter. And it looked like he was dead right there. And oh. Just a little run there and a burst and a big first down to get things going. 22 yards and a conversion on third down for the Missouri All-Stars offense. Bennett has a three-yard touchdown run back in the first quarter. Headed to Missouri Western. Play action, and here's Bennett again. He's everywhere. Fighting toward the first down before he is uh, wrestled to the turf by Cy Hockey, the Baldwin safety. Bennett Disco or Cy Hockey, what's your name? We, we, those are our second nominee. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to ask Disco if he liked Disco. I asked Hockey if he liked Hockey. He said he did not like he did Hockey. did not like Hockey. And I'm sure he didn't watch game seven last night. Uh, I'm sure he did. Well, we saw another just quick out to the flat there with Bennett, and that's a, that's a weapon right now. Second down and short. Good drive for Missouri to start the third quarter. Eldridge, not much doing there. As it's close, but not enough yet. Nice play by Lampers, who had the strip on Eldridge back in the late second quarter that ended up in a touchdown for the Kansas All-Stars defense. And they say he didn't get it, third down. Yeah, just a little short. Connery back in. Who got that BO? Who got that BO? 
Here's Connery. Down the left hash, first down. As we check in with Nick with another coach here, Jeff Gorley in the house. Oh, we'll check in with the coach and uh, Nick momentarily here. Coach uh, coming back from uh, hip surgery. And I talked to him at the Kansas practice uh, earlier this week. He's recovering nicely. He's in good spirits. And we'll talk to him here in a couple of minutes as we got a whistle prior to the snap and a flag down. Let's check in now with Nick. Sorry about that, Kevin. I was uh, here reminiscing with uh, Coach Gorley. He was just telling us he had his hip replaced just a few weeks ago. How's that going? You feeling better? Fantastic. I feel so much better. The pain's gone. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bone did a great job on me. I'm sorry, what? Dr. Dr. William Bone. I know. That's fantastic. My, my mom, true story, had a chiropractor named Dr. Bone Break, which is, which is pretty funny. Oh, really? Well, that was in Blackwell, Oklahoma, so I, I don't think it was that guy, but maybe maybe it's this kid. Who knows? Who knows? Well, Coach, uh, congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction tonight. Thank you so much. It was such an honor. I, I'm, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to be humble and modest and all that and go, oh, and I just, this is awesome. What a way to finish up and, and be recognized by your own peers. And uh, it, it, It's really an honor. We were talking with Coach Kanopic too, that, it, that it's got to be especially nice for your family to be able to, to come out and kind of participate in something that, uh, that you were part of and they were a part of for so many years. I've had I've had a great opportunity. Uh, I got to play in the state championship in Missouri with my oldest son, won a state championship in Kansas with my youngest son, but tonight I got to hold hands with my wife and while I accepted this award, and that was awesome because, you know, she's always been the one up in the bleachers, and uh, this was this was her night too. That's pretty special. And just talk about this association and how it's evolved to include this Hall of Fame. And I know you've been really involved over the years. You know, I, I have. I was actually on the original board. Uh, they needed a guy from the Inter's Classic League, and I volunteered and, and got involved in it. And I knew it was going to be a great association because people were doing it for the right thing. They wanted, they wanted to do right by the kids. They wanted to do right by football. And that's what's driven this. And, and of course, Sam and, and Mike and all, you know, the whole board, Kevin Keaton, the, the whole board has done a great job of continuing this and making this thing uh, really top top level, top class. You talked about your time at Belton and then later at Olathe South. Uh, you were you were doing the Missouri to Kansas thing before that was cool. <laughs> I wish I hadn't quite done it so early because everybody <laughs> thinks I'm double dipping and I'm not. I'm, I'm not retired. <laughs> if anybody in Missouri wants an old coach, I'm, I'm ready to come across the line again. But uh, no, it, it it was right at the right time. Olathe South had a great reputation. Mark uh, Mark Mark Littrell had just left, and um, I knew they had some ball players. And the ultimate goal is to you know help kids grow. But then there's that other side of winning too. And, and I thought I could sneak in there and, and win. And as it turned out, it was pretty good pretty good call. So I'm, I'm really glad I wouldn't do it any other way but I kind of wish I'd stayed in Missouri. To, I'd be retired today. <laughs> well, you can add Hall of Famer to that resume. Good luck to you, Coach. Thanks a bunch. It's, it's my honor. Thank you very much. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Coach. And Nick and another big defensive play by Blue Valley Southwest linebacker Jake Lamphers. Well, this has just been a nightmare for Missouri. They got down there. They were first and five at one point uh, from about the 29-yard line and uh, threw a ball in the end zone, and there was a penalty, a personal foul that knocked him back after a uh, no gain and uh, an incomplete pass, and then they get a sack, and now they're punting again, and we know that hasn't been a great spot for them. Fourth down and 28. Dion mentioned this drive was sabotaged by mistakes. Fair catch, call for and taken in at the 25-yard line. Now pushing and shoving on the sidelines as a player from the Missouri side got into the Kansas bench. And this is a border war. That's and Khalil Snow. Who is that? From no, it's Antoine Nunn, Antoine Jr. Antoine from Belton, and it looked like... Came flying into the bench area after the fair catch was called, and I think the Kansas guy said, wait a minute, he called for a fair catch. Plays over. And they... And I don't know if Nunn saw the fair catch signal and just kept playing on and tempers got a little heated there on the sidelines and now the officials are going to sort this out. Mm -hmm. 
basically a 27 yard punt fair catch well and, and Boyd had actually got one off and, and gotten a good punt that good was for his him. best punt of the night and good for him because he had struggled all night long I mean that's no foul on the play pick up the flag says the referee Jack Messer there's the punt there's none getting two guys yeah, I kind of got drove <laughs> into the bench and I think they got knocked up yeah you know. uh, there was the little slap in the face of pleasure tell you what uh, I've done this game a number of times the biggest the hardest hits in these games are on special teams there's oh, guys and you remember that the, the, the uh, least summit north knocked game. in the next week and it was it was Fort Osage was coming off a state championship appearance and they had some guys who came out on special teams and they were clean hits but they were big hits and they were laying the wood and I remember you said something to me about it's an all-star game and I'm like yeah some of those Fort Osage kids don't know the difference <laughs> yeah spotted at the 26 first and 10 Hunter Thomas from Olathe East oh, Fisher jumps off sides when Conway went in motion So it'll be a first and five at the 31 yard line now for the Kansas All-Stars. 21 unanswered points. Leading it here in the third quarter. Trying to make it two straight in the series. Led by Missouri at 14, 12, and one. As this is the 28th annual game. Quick pitch out to Conaway. We've seen his speed damaging the Missouri All-Star defense. Oh, and he's running in, you know, not just in space there. But he's getting up the field. And We've seen him break tackles on the outside. He cut that one inside. Daniel Buecher, the stop, the outside linebacker from St. Joe Benton. Headed to Mid-American Nazarene University. Over 100 yards for Conaway on five carries. Five for 130 for the Shawnee Mission North wide receiver. And he's able to get a first down. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Inside running. McQuillan, the big back from Lansing. Step over some tackles and get out to the 46 yard line. Make it the 47 yard line. Yep. Nice gain there. Some seven yards. Well, McQuillan. If you're Kansas, you really want to. Just keep doing that. Keep grinding out. You've got the lead. This is exactly what you want. This is what the flex bone offense does. Keeps the ball away from their opponent. Takes time off the clock. They keep grinding away at you. This is the Lansing running back again. Quillen for the first down run. Number five, Connor McQuillen with the carry. Well, and that's, you know, the pitch was going good for him. He's headed to Northwestern College up in Iowa. Wants to be a toxicologist. Coach Gorley, we saw that interview with Nick. He coaches at Lansing as an assistant to Dylan Brown. He was assistant when he was, was the offensive coordinator. Yeah, they switched positions, didn't they? The late to South. Back in the day, is oh boy, things are getting a little physical after the whistle. And yeah, they've got to clean that up. But the, the officials have done a pretty good job of getting in there and understanding what's going on. Well, that was uh, a leveling block there by Bryce Schulze, Spring Hill product. Should be second down and eight. Here's Conaway trying to get to the edge. And he's able to do that. He's just a little bit shy of the first down. Yeah, he's about seven and a half. He's going to be out at the 40. And it's every time they're running the ball and making these yards, that Kansas that Kansas sideline is jacked up. And there's a, they're, they're feeling it right now. Coach Lisher, all smiles. Momentum on his side with those 21 late second quarter points. 
Third down and short now facing the Kansas offense. Inside give and Fisher able to shut this play down. It's a big stop, but I, you know, fourth down. Fourth down. I, I think if they had a two touchdown lead here, I'd go for it all the time. But I don't know if I want to give up possession here in midfield. I mean, that's kind of my that's my issue. Well, we've seen him go for it on a couple of occasions. No punter is sent out. They will go fourth and two from the 40 yard line. Quick pitch it out to Sturdy. Little speedster from DeSoto cuts it up the field and he breaks free. He's inside the 20 yard line. Keegan Sturdy, his father is the Mid American Nazarene University head football coach, Todd Sturdy. And that's where he's headed, but this is a big run on fourth down, Dion. Well, and he, his hesitation right there is just enough to let that gap open, and he hits it hard and fast and kind of a smaller guy, a little different look, not quite as physical as Conway or the other guys and gets it done. 28 yards and a first down down to the 12-yard line. Keegan set receiving marks at DeSoto and he got there in August of 2018. So he played one season and broke their receiving record at DeSoto High School. Here's McQuillan and Malachi Hughes with a manly tackle there as he swung the Lansing product quickly to the turf. Missouri's got to play tough right here. They got to hope to hold to a field goal. Two yards. Malachi Hughes from Liberty North, older brother Michael, a Division I basketball player at Duquesne. 6'8 player, doing well there, average about 11 points, six rebounds. Uh, Duquesne in Pittsburgh. Yep. Second down and eight. Conaway to the edge. Billy. Diving into the end zone. Now their official saying he stepped out at the two. They may have a holding penalty on the backside. And a flag is down as well. Well, he might have stepped out earlier than that. Well, and the, and the, you know, they're making them think here. Garrett Schick, an outstanding safety from Pleasant Hill, had a choice to make, and he took the inside angle. And so when he tried to get upfield, Conaway was able to get around him. But this may be all coming back. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness against the defense. Half the distance to go. That's a killer. Things are getting a little chippy out there. And you see where it came from. It came from behind the play. So Schick was, was it Schick or Smith? That was Smith. Just got a little bit too far up. So it'll be first and goal at the one yard line for Kansas. Trying to go up by two touchdowns. And the ball is fumbled by Thomas. Able to dive on it. And he'll lose three yards back to the four yard line. So it'll be second down and goal. That's kind of a break for Missouri. Thomas saying, that's on me. I think he pulled out a little quick and just never really got it. Did the smart thing, jumped on it. Thomas headed to William Jewell. for 400 yards and 10 touchdowns through for 1600 and 16 touchdowns second and goal Billy Conaway trying to cut back and he'll get in for the touchdown Billy Conaway in the star of this game over 100 yards with the touchdown I was gonna say uh, if you're looking for someone who's made a huge impact in this game it's Billy Conaway Jr. And that's a big score with 212 now you're talking you only have 14 minutes of game action left for Missouri you've got to try and get a score here because they legitimately can get a ball if they're pinned deep enough in their own end Kansas and run seven eight nine minutes off the off the clock Brazil the party kicker knocking it through He's a twin. His sister was the star was basketball the player. Kansas kicker. Oh, I'm sorry. My, <laughs> my bad. The lake, I beg your pardon. Uh, lake uh, drills it through there. 
And it's 28 to 14. Yes, Kansas looked dead in the water there, Dion, nice. late second quarter. And in the last 13 minutes, they've outscored them 28 to nothing. Well, they block a punt. And uh, let's check in now with Nick, with the president of the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association, Mike Zagunas. Thanks, Kevin. Indeed, here with uh, Coach Zagunas, now an assistant to Olathe West, longtime head coach at Blue Valley Northwest as well. And now the head, uh, the, pre the president of the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association, celebrating your first year on the job here tonight with the, the culmination of that year with the All-Star game. Yeah, this is always a, a fun night. Um, just a great celebration of, of high school football. Um, it's fun to see a lot of the old time coaches, a lot of the, you know, it, all, a lot of coaches show up to this game. So it's just neat for all of us as a coaching group come together and, and then be able to watch a, a good football game in uh, June is a lot of fun as well. Yeah, it is kind of fun always uh, just socially seeing uh, some of the coaches. A lot of folks come out that uh, that don't really have uh, a lot of interest in the game other than maybe having a player or two that are in it. Uh, it's always fun to see all the coaches come out. It is. And now that we have a, a Hall of Fame uh, induction, that's even neater because a lot of these old time coaches come back and they're just thrilled to, to be back out on a football field. It's, it's awesome for the families to, to be able to get that recognition that they 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 so deserve so seeing those guys yeah the hall of fame is uh, has really t taken an evolution and, and has become a, a pretty special part of uh, this evening absolutely uh, I, again it's just a terrific celebration of, of high school football and ter terrific celebration of uh, coaching uh, I, I think it's it's really neat that we have an association that uh, does a good job in recognizing coaches but also players um, with the different things that our, our board and our association does. I think a lot of people might be surprised to hear how tight-knit the coaching fraternity is. Uh, you, talk a little bit about the association and what it does and the clinics you guys put on in the off-season and, and just uh, all of the various uh, things that go into to being the president of this association. Yeah, we do a number of things. Um, we hold four clinics in the spring for, for football coaches. Um, again, it's a social gathering. We get a chance to talk football and uh, it's a lot of fun seeing seeing those guys after long, tough seasons. Uh, and then we, we also have a scholar athlete banquet where we recognize uh, scholar athletes. Uh, this all-star game is kind of the, the, the big thing that we do. It's the culminating act of, of our year. And so uh, with the addition of the Hall of Fame, it, it's, we just do a good job of promoting football, um, do a good job of, of hopefully um, getting kids excited to, to come to a game like this and, and, and see a great game and, and want to be a part of this as well. And so um, it, it's it's fun. It's a great group. Uh, you've got about six guys from Missouri, six guys from Kansas. And, and so it's neat to, to get to know the, some of the guys on the other side of the state line. And now you get uh, to enjoy a few months off, get back to your day job, and uh, then get back to things in December. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, this is, like I said, kind of a culminating act of what we do as an association. But now we now we get busy with uh, our own programs. And I uh, want to just thank you guys for what you do. Uh, you guys are awesome in promoting high school football and, and high school sports in general, but uh, particularly high school football. So thank you very much for the great job that you guys do. Well, thank you. And if you could uh, go ahead and put an order for this kind of weather again next year, that would be great as uh, it's just a perfect night out here tonight. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Thank well, Coach, uh, thanks so much for visiting with us and uh, good luck on a great event once again. Thank you very much. That's Coach Mike Zagunas. Back up to you guys. Nick, a three and out by the Missouri All-Stars offense. Short boy punt. We down near the 47-yard line. But this Kansas defense has really been stepping up. Deal. Yeah, they came out with Sean Ross the first two plays at quarterback. And uh, I think that they had good ideas there, but the Kansas defense swarmed him. He you know, forced him out of the pocket. And he was trying to make something happen. And you know, really, they're, they're able to swarm now. They got the lead. They know they got to put the ball in the air. Dalton White made a good play after a scramble on a throw. Um, so it's, it's definitely go time now. Uh, for for the Missouri defense, they've got to make a play here and get a stop because uh, they're we're down to 32 seconds left in the third quarter against an offense that can eat a game alive. So a 20 oh. three yard punt and a pass down the middle to a wide open receiver Logan Talley touchdown 47 yards and Kansas 
feeling it. That just might be the dagger. Tally just broke right free. I'm not sure exactly who had responsibility on that. He was wide open, 15 yards. But he just ran right past the defensive backs and looked like there was some confusion. And that's a huge play. And Kansas is taking this game on. You see him there, there's nobody. Easy pitch and catch. Boyne had all day. Tally wide open, who won a couple of state titles under Coach Appleby at Mill Valley. Yes. Lake. Oh, geez. It's the extra point now, more pushing and shoving gotta, after the play. I think, I think the coaches might need to pull their boys together for a minute here. Because this is getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, I think frustrations are starting to set in. Yes. It's now. 35 unanswered points by the Kansas All-Stars. They lead it 35-14 late third quarter. Well, that's the one thing about that flex bone that they don't talk about is that they grind you, they grind you, they grind you, they grind you, and then suddenly somebody breaks out and they hit you over the top for the big play. And, you know, Shawnee Mission East, when Dustin Laney was there, they would do that to you. They just grind, grind, grind. And they had, a, you know, some receivers who'd have, you know, 25 catches and 15 touchdowns because they just hit big plays over the middle. The hardworking men and women of the building and construction trades are proud to sponsor Preps KC and high school football in 2019. Learn a skill, earn a living, score a career, and be union at be union. Just before halftime, Kansas was down 14 to nothing, and things were looking dismal, really. Yeah, it, it, it looked like the, they, they had a chance to... Missouri had a chance to, they had the ball. And the, the, the Kansas forced a three and out. And from that point on, it's been all Kansas. Still got another quarter to play. This Lake has it on the tee. And see what this guy does. He puts it in the end zone. I'm trying to figure out how he missed the first two field goals. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe he was a little nervous. Yeah, a little nervous or rusty or something like that. I mean, he got a great. scholarship to go to Washburn. I said, you're a kicker. You didn't get a scholarship. He's like, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> hey, you know, must be pretty good. I'll tell you this about D2 schools. They'll spend a scholarship on a kicker. D1, a lot of D1 schools won't. That's and true, and yeah. And then you find, joke with them. And then you're finding, you know, big-time programs, kids missing kicks at the end. And, and it's, you know, you've got to have a you got a strong kicker. It's it's a weapon. Well, like, uh, yeah, he did miss those two, but been perfect on the PATs and bombing the kickoffs. And the Missouri offense. Samantzik at quarterback. Connery in the backfield. Carney back. He's going to go to KU as a student and study architecture. He's a hard-nosed running back. A couple of hard nose yards there. Well, right now the line of scrimmage is being won by the Kansas defensive line. That'll be the uh, final play of the third quarter as Kansas continues their domination after three. 35 14, Kansas on top in the 28th annual BUnion.com Kansas versus Missouri All Star High School football game right here on Spectrum Sports. You're watching the Ivy High School Game of the Week here on Spectrum Sports. Kevin White, Deion Clisso, and Nick McCabe. And here's your Ivy scoring by quarters. And as we mentioned, it was a crazy first half. Things were looking not so good for Kansas. Well, not so much anymore. They dominated from the late second quarter on. Yeah, this is just a remarkable tournament. Uh, and, and not just a, you know, they got those scores at the end. They've come out and dominated the third quarter. Now Missouri is left trying to find something that happened for him here and try and make it a 21-point deficit with just 12 minutes to go. Second down and seven to start the fourth quarter. Samantzik, all kinds of time, throwing to the outside for one of his wide receivers, Garrett Thompson. And he'll get it to the 30, 31-yard line, a gain of seven or eight. Seeing that Samantzik to Thompson connection a number yeah, of times. Yeah, you know, sometimes if, that's, if that will help, Samantha so get something going. Maybe go find a guy you know who can get open and and, and hook up on that, and then you'll then that'll break some other guys free. And he got eight and a first down. Did Garrett Thompson is headed to Northwest Missouri State to be a student. An 
undecided on his major. Samatsik wants the long ball to Bryce Bertram and Jalen Scruggs with great coverage from Bishop Miege. He can cover like a blanket there. Yeah, we haven't called his name much because he hasn't seen much action. But when he has, he has been tight in coverage all night long. And I tell you, Scruggs is a guy very talented. We talked about Stefan Camp from Blue Valley North. We haven't called his name much either, but there's some great corners on this Kansas team. Miege continues their domination. Five straight state crowns. John Holmes in the house tonight, their head coach. Congratulations to linebacker Dylan Downing winning the award award. Pass over the middle. Reed Levi of Rockers. Gang tackle there. And the officials are going to have to stop all this yeah. shenanigans after the play and let these guys push and shove. They're Otherwise, trying to, they're trying to get quick ugly. whistle, but they, uh, that's not really solving the problem. Right Gain of six, third down and four, because tempers are uh, running hot right now. Usually it's on a hot night. It's a nice night, man. Yeah. No reason to be mad. Well, I think just the 35 unanswered can get you in a bad mood if you're wearing uh, yellow and white tonight. Samatsik pass deflected off the hand of Reed Levi incomplete. Yeah, a little behind him here. Uh, you know, you reserve you're going for it. There's no punt the ball away here. A shout out here to uh, Coach Association partner Neil Brothers. They came on this year and designed the uniforms. The three, and really just fantastic looking. Sharp, uh, modern, you know, kids like them. Big numbers. I mean, you know, it's a it's a good look for both, both squads. And uh, it's going to be fun to see what they come up with the next few years. I like the gold. I think the gold's good for Missouri. And that blue, you know, Kansas has been red a lot in the past. I think the blue's great. You know, the red and blues, they kind of have always gone, you know, M-U-K-U colors. Boyd is out, and they will punt on fourth down and four. And Boyd, it's his best punt of the night. It's muffed, and the ball is fought for inside uh, the 35. It looks like Kansas, man. I think, yeah, the Kansas All-Stars got back on it. And that was Lampers, right place, right time, the outside linebacker. Uh, Ethan Bowers from Lawson looked like he had it. Well, he was right place at right time after the muff by Haynes, yeah. And there's Lampers. Yep. Bowers missed his opportunity, and Kansas dodges a bullet. And they'll take over first and 10 from the 34-yard line as Hunter Thomas, the Olathe East quarterback, will lead the offense out. We'll have his own running back, Trey Carney, back there as his fullback. And I don't think they're going to be in any hurry here. They hit the big one over the top. I think they've 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 hit their, you know, into that trick bag. I'm sure they've got more, but they've got the one they've done. There's no sense in putting the ball in the air at this point. We have to hustle here. Nine seconds, eight. On the See Paul one. Beasley, the defensive lineman, now moving in at guard on the offensive line. Schlegel product. Call timeout. Timeout for the Kansas All-Stars. Yeah, there's a little bit of substitution issues. Which, you know, for an All-Star game, a lot of times you can see that uh, a lot more than we have tonight, so. See some of the coaches talking to the players. A lot of coaches volunteering their time, Dion, to do this in their uh, summer break time. Yeah, you know, this is this is not easy for a lot of them. There's some that, uh, you know, they were in, they're in camp during the day and uh, you know the Missouri side you know, Leonard Bullock from Grandview Rashad Bird from Van Horn Ken Davis from St. Joe Benton Sylvester Gibson from Van Horn Roosevelt Gibson from Hogan Prep Benny Palmer we talked about him Jeremy Picard the head coach at Grandview Tareen Rollins you might remember him as a big time running back at Raytown South oh, yeah. he's an assistant there and then Blake Seifert those are all the Missouri guys and they really volunteer their guys we'll go to the Kansas guys here in a minute but you know a lot of them do. They have to go to camp for their kids during the day. Hey, there's some that were down at Pitt State and we're driving back. I mean, it's it's not easy doing it. This is a big time week and month for them. And you'd think, you know, maybe they're just kind of going through the motions. Uh, a few years ago, I saw Tim Brunhard. I mean, he was so passionate about it. <laughs> These guys put their heart and soul out there. Coach Orbazan coaching that defense and Coach Delaney. Uh, yeah, you talk about the Kansas coach. Coach Delaney was at Shawnee Mission East, and he's back at St. Thomas Aquinas now as assistant. Mike Gilman's a free state assistant. Jeff Lister from Lawrence. Mark Littrell, uh, last year's coach, uh, retiring, came out and helped Lister like Lister helped him last year. Brandon May from Shawnee Mission West. Brett Orbazan from Shawnee Mission South. 
R.J. Nill from Olathe West, Josh Perkins from Olathe South, Taylor Stewart from Free State, and Harrison Taylor from Mason Linder. Another nice run by Billy Conaway out to the 40-yard line as we check in now with Nick. All right, guys, I am here with Christian Roth. Made a big pump block in uh, recovery for a touchdown. The strip, you had the strip. You had the strip, correct? No, you had the... Oh, in the end zone. It's been a while. I was over there on the other sideline. Uh, you guys have made a bunch of big plays. Uh, offense is really rolling now, but uh, your defense has really played well after giving up the 14 early points. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we we started getting some forward momentum after I recovered that uh, punt in the, in the end zone, and offense just been picking up off that momentum, and defense been keeping us locked down. Uh, your teammate, uh, Logan Talley, he, he apparently is not uh, a big talker on television, so he didn't want to talk to me, but uh, he made a big play on the offense. Uh, have you have you seen him make that play a lot uh, in your high school careers together? Oh, yeah, I've barely ever seen him drop any ball on the field. He's a great guy. He's, uh, he just doesn't talk a lot, like I said. <laughs> well, good luck and enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, back up to you. Well, that last play, uh, another big run by Connolly on third down. But Kind of way to get that first down and, and you know Fisher looked like he may have had him in the back and that shows Fisher speed that he almost got out there to him but Conway got around the outside and it's been a lot of Billy Con a lot of everybody but Conway has made big play after big play be it a third down uh, and converting things and, and really keeping the sticks moving for Kansas over 150 yards and a touchdown for Billy Conway running this flex bone offense for the first time in his career 171. He's going to call Coach Zach Grampy and say, hey, we should run the flex bone last year. Yeah. <laughs> he had plenty of numbers doing that. He's. No question. Uh, yeah, I saw Billy in action against Olathe West. He is an exciting player. South Dakota should be glad to be getting him. Well, he's he's a physical guy. He's not. He's got the speed, and he's he doesn't have a ton of height. You know, he's 6'1", 200, but, I mean, he's physical. Three-step drop, pass to the outside. Sammy Macklin from Shawnee Mission South at a buck 43, dancing around, and he'll have the first down as he's taken down just outside the 20-yard line. And uh, I'm sure he is talking to the defenders because he is a well, that's major good. league talker with his Kodak the Rapper face shield. <laughs> And that's just a, you know, now you're seeing they're, they're kind of opening things up, throwing up to the outside. Yeah, well, kind of doing what they want, when they want to do it. Spotted at the 21, first and 10. It's again, they want to run clock and walk away with two in a row for the Sunflower State as this is Carney up the middle. Tried to power through the tackle of Bowers, the Lawson defensive lineman, and he's able to hang on. Well, they're so methodical. I mean, it's, you know, up the gut, up the gut, maybe a little pitch. You know, just back and forth. Second down and six. As the clock goes under eight minutes to play. And no hurry. Regulation, yeah, this, this is what uh, this offense sucks the life out of a defense. Quick pitch out. This is Cameron uh, yeah. Jackson, and I think his knee touched. And officials quickly jumping in at yeah, the end of the play. They have to right now. And hats off to Tally. Tally got over there and got Jackson and got him out of there. And that's your teammates have got to look out for you too. If they see you getting hot, they got to come over there and help you and get you calm back down. Jackson. Either side. I mean, I'm not. I'm not single anybody out here. I'm saying. If you see your teammate getting hot, you're not, you shouldn't, you should be running over there to pull him away. Jackson going to walk on at KU and play for the new head coach, Les Miles. Study psychology, good all around player. So they got a pretty good back there still at St. Thomas Aquinas. By the name of Tank Young. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's Thomas rolling left, throwing against his body and able to. Nope, not completed. I thought the receiver <laughs> tally had it. And he, I think he thinks he got it. Uh, they say incomplete. Boy, he fought for that ball. He went and wanted, even if he didn't get the catch here, it, 
Thomas stayed in and took a lick to deliver this ball. Boyd is going to light him up here. Yep. And Fisher finished him off. Able to still get enough mustard on this. And. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it touched the ground. Tally thought he got it. He was right at the goal line. That would have been his second touchdown of the night, but not in the cards. Incomplete, as we'll see. A long field goal attempt of 38 by Lake. We know he has the leg for this. Does he have the accuracy? And again, 0 for 3 by Lake. And you can see he's the frustration. Yeah. yeah. Definitely has the strong leg. Yeah, he, I mean, but you, have you noticed though, a lot of his kickoffs have come on kind of over to the left too. So I mean, I know they line up that way. So maybe he's just got a little thing tonight where he's pulling a little bit. Like my golf swing occasionally. Yeah, uh, being kind. More than occasionally. Well, after the miss, let's check in down in the field with Nick. All right, thanks guys. I'm here with a guy who's technically working right now. Coach Mark Littrell from uh, Leavenworth High School, Olathe South before that, and, and uh, retiring after this season. Uh, Coach, congratulations on a great career. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been awesome. Uh, you know, I've, I've had great support from my family, uh, great coaches that I've had, great players. It's been, a, it's been an honor to, to be in this great profession, and, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, you were 2017 inductee into the Hall of Fame. Uh, what was that experience like for you and your family? Well, it was a, another great experience that, uh, to be recognized. And it's just, you know, I'm just a small piece of the puzzle. Uh, like I said, pa family, coaches, players that I've had has just been awesome. And, and I just uh, appreciate, you know, them recognizing me. And it's, it's been great. It's been those uh, early 2000s Olathe the South squads were, were some of my favorites to ever watch. You guys were, were among the uh, the early adopters of that spread offense at the high school level. Uh, what were those years like? I know you had some great skill talent guys, uh, a lot of great players there at that time. We did. We, we had we had a great, great group of kids. And they, you know, the thing about it is they had a great work ethic and they, they worked hard and they were coachable. And, and I had great coaches that that taught them every day. And and, and it was just a great experience. We had that, you know, we installed that new offense where we ran the, the jet sweep and, and the plays off of it. And it was hard to defend. And, you know, when you got guys like Travis Jackson and, and the Proctors that we had, you know, playing for us, and Josh Perkins, who's on the staff here, was a great receiver for us and, and played in the secondary. So, you know, when you have those kinds, it's all about players and, and assistant coaches. It's not about me. Well, Coach, uh, you're retiring from coaching uh, after this uh, last year. This is your last game uh, to, to coach. Uh, tell us about your future plans. Well, I'm, I'm working for a Mammoth uh, Sports Construction, Kansas Turf. And, uh, you know, I was going to go one more year, but this opportunity presented itself. And I wanted to keep working and doing something that kept me involved in football and meeting with coaches and, and administrators. And, you know, it's, it's been a great, you know, 43 years. And I, 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 was, I was at a banquet one time, yards. and I told them I've, I've never Still felt like in the 43 years that I had to work. It's, it's been it's been fun. It's been hard work and it's been you know, but but I've loved it and, and it's just been a great I've had a, a great time doing it and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next step in my uh, in my career. Well, we've talked to a bunch of Sunflower League legends guys here tonight. Coach Mark Littrell, one of them, and we had a couple inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Uh, it's going to be a, a new era starting in the Sunflower League next year, guys. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. We had a completion there, it looked, and then a, a little run of Blake Atkins, but uh, then a sideline penalty backs up Missouri, so another shot in the foot here. Second down and 17, Blake Atkins, the Pleasant Hill quarterback, swings it out to trainer from Grandview, the track star, and he's out to the 40-yard line. Couple yards shy of the first down. Trainer on the Grandview track team that won the state championship this past spring. Brought home another basketball state championship yeah, as well. And a good spring for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and, and I got to do some sideline for that Grandview basketball team, and that is a, if you had a chance to go watch Grandview, you know what I'm talking about. That, that was as good a basketball team as I've seen playing a long time. Coach Morris, great team, great season. Pass incomplete. Bennett climbing the ladder there, but <laughs> he looked. At, I yeah. thought he was going to get up there and get it, but it was just a little too high. Incomplete. Atkins, Atkins trying to get that going. That was a fastball by Blake, and it's going to be now fourth down and three. And 
Bennett sporting a Belton sticker, a Blue Spring sticker, Fort Osage sticker. Atkins pass over the middle, incomplete, intended for Thompson from Smithville. Everybody looking around for a flag, <laughs> and there is not one down. I was going to so say the, the ball Kansas defenders were almost looking for a flag too. Everybody was doing that. You're not going to call it. You're not going to no. call it. We will take over the pigskin. Yes. Fourth down pass. Sales incomplete, but uh, Coach Lisher, uh, final game as a head coach, uh, enjoying things on the Kansas sidelines. I wouldn't say in the second quarter in the early part that things were, uh, his stomach wasn't feeling the greatest. No, I, you know, I, I wonder if the, their confidence didn't, I mean, they had, the, they had those turnovers. They were moving the ball. Right. They were doing what they wanted to do. Uh, they, they missed a couple field goals and they had two turnovers. So they probably felt like, hey, we're doing what we want to do here. So we're, we're not necessarily in a bad spot, but man, what a turn of events there in the final three minutes of the second quarter. Or Boyne back running the offense. Tackle from behind by Cade Hampton from Kearney. Good backside pursuit there by Hampton. And that's what you got to do. Everybody's got to play their part when you're going against the flex bone. And the backside guys have got to play that part and go get that quarterback sometimes. Interesting. He's got a twin sister. Frizzell has a twin sister. And both of them are excellent athletes like their brothers. Well, guys from Kearney, yeah. 11 sacks for Hampton, who's headed to UCM. Hampton's sister are going to run track at Pittsburgh State. There's Addison. Quick pitch it out to uh, Billy Conaway. You said that name, yeah, and he is just tearing up the edge for Missouri as Buker makes the stop, and now more. Pushing and shoving after the whistle. We got to stop this, and it's got to stop now. Now the coaches are coming out. I see Coach Harris coming out on the field, and he's going to maybe talk to his guys, and Coach Lisher on the other sideline is going to talk to his guys like. Let's have some sportsmanship here. Game's almost over. Kansas has dominated since the late second quarter, and I think uh, nerves are coming frayed here. Like you said, Deanna, you don't know who to point the finger at. It's both sides, you got to point the finger at because yeah. they keep going at one another. It just needs to stop. It's an honor to be a part of this game. If you go out there and, and make bad decisions. You're dishonoring yourself and you're dishonoring the game that you were asked to play. And this looks terrible on TV, by the way. Yeah. So you got a coach saying, hey, you know, you're on TV. You know, comport yourself the necessary way. A quarterback sneak by Rabone on third down and short. And he's gonna have the first down, yeah. And now a player is shaking up. It's Paul Beasley, a slow back to the huddle. He jumps up and wants to get back in place. First down and 29 first and 10. Conaway in motion takes the pitch and Billy going to reverse field. Don't recommend this but Billy's had such a big night but he got a crackback block. Yeah he's going to get a illegal block. <laughs> Raboyne, the quarterback, trying to, make trying to help out, and he <laughs> laid the wood to somebody. Yeah, there's a little clip there. I'm going to say it's, illegal, it's an illegal block on the quarterback, and Kansas going to take the penalty here.
First and 36. Yeah, yeah. Play was not going to gain yardage after Billy reversed his field. Quarterback trying to help him out. Legal block. 15 yard penalty, and yes, there you go. That's negative, 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 first and 36 from the 45. And more flags. Full motion. Full start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. So first and 41, let's send it down to Nick. <laughs> well, guys, I just wanted to say, uh, also inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight, I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier, but our friend Dave Stewart from uh, here at Spectrum Sports previously, but uh, also a longtime host of the uh, Simone Awards. Congratulations to him as well on being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight as he was uh, inducted as an associate of high school football. He's been a great friend and ambassador to the game of high school football in the metro area for a long, long time, guys. He's hosting the uh, Kansas City Sports Commission, which he's done a uh, banquet, which he's done for several years. So he was unable to be there tonight. And uh, a good friend of his and ours, Tim Crone, presented him with his plaque at the Kansas City Sports Commission tonight. And congratulations to Dave. And I'll be real honest with you. He is a mentor of mine in this business. And I don't know if I would be doing any of the broadcasting that I'm doing without having Frank Bowl and Dave Stewart put me on a, a radio show 15, 16, 17 years ago. And when I'd done just a little bit of radio, and, and, and thanks to Dave and, and for what he does for not just football, but for other broadcasters and other people. Well deserving for Mr. Stewart, who loves high school football, getting back to his days back at Shawnee Mission South in high school. And I'm sure he's happy for Scott Wright, who was his teammate uh, back in the old days, going in the Hall of Fame tonight. So two Hall of Famers. Dave was a pretty good baseball player when yeah. he was in high school. He played, I think he played at K-State some too, didn't he? Yeah. Quite the high school athlete, Dave Stewart. Quite the legendary broadcaster. Is you know, and I was looking into, you know, as I was working on his uh, bio for the Hall of Fame, uh, I, I knew he'd been here a long time, but uh, he did two, year, two years in Des Moines, Iowa. Started out at KSHB and then did two years at Des Moines, Iowa, and then came back and has been at, was a channel line for uh, close to 25 years, for 15 years at least, 15, 16 years, and then moved over to Metro, which became Time Warner Cable, which became Spectrum, and uh, now does a lot of freelance work and, and things like that. And it, you know, I, I remember before, you know, I was just a newspaper guy, and he was doing sports in your shorts on Johnny Dare's show in the morning, and that was a great outlet there on, on top of all the high school stuff he did. So congratulations to him being into the Hall of Fame as an associate because there's a lot of good guys, you know, people who are, are honored who are not necessarily coaches or players. Fourth and 42. You don't hear that too much. And Lake, who doesn't punt very often, sends this one off the side of his foot. And it'll be Missouri ball here with just over two to play, trailing 35 to 14. So Looks like Deion Kansas is going to start a win streak here, well, two in a row. That'll make it 14 wins by Missouri and 13 by Kansas. And then the one, there's one game that didn't finish because of uh, bad thunderstorms that rolled through. So I was there that night. Yeah, I was going to say. At ODAC, we were in the yeah. right town. Missouri was leading three to nothing at the end of the first quarter. I was going to say, it was and, early, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I wasn't at that game, but I remember when it happened. And it was a pretty stormy night the rest of the night. Yeah, there was no yeah. waiting it out, I don't think, was it? No, those were some severe thunderstorms, but Missouri was leading three to nothing, and we said, that's all. So that's your one tie, so. So Monsick from Smithville, the quarterback, stepping, throwing, has a man down the field, and Trainer makes the catch, keeps his balance, <laughs> and gets in for the touchdown. Harold Trainer from Grandview. Well, and Samantha had a lot of time to throw that ball. Great job by the offensive line, and Trainer just got in a track meet, made a great catch, and held his feet to finish that off. And something good to go home with here from Missouri, scoring 152. Look at the offensive line. Samantha, he's able to step and throw, delivers the ball on time, a little behind him, but not much, and he's able to keep his feet and get the score. Jai Haynes from Olathe South tried to keep up with him, then tried to make the tackle. Adjusted well after that, but Trainer with a great play. 
57 yards on the pass from Samancic to Trainer. Trainer, the track star from Grandview. Undecided on college, but does want to study criminology. And he picks a college. Yes, here's Frizzell. Extra point. It is good. So it's 35-21 with under two to play. The trainer just showed great balance there as he relives that touchdown catch with his teammates. Well, my question is, is how much did you work on the onside kick in 10 days? <laughs> uh, a little bit. I saw a little bit of that, but not much. It's always interesting to see, you know, they always try and do some, some special teams at the beginning of the, of the practice and, you know, work on situations. And um, you just never know how much time you're going to have to get those things in. So the hands team will come out for. See Conaway out there. Kansas, I see Tally, the wide receiver. Billy Bartlett, wide receiver. Macklin. Quillen, the running back. LJ Mack from Lawrence Free State. Sammy Macklin. <laughs> There's plenty of good hands there. Let's see uh, if he can handle an onside kick. Uh, Gavin Frizzell, the Carney kicker. Going to the University of Missouri as a student. And it's right. covered up by the Kansas All-Stars. Logan Talley, the Mill Valley wide receiver, had a touchdown catch earlier in the ball game, 47 yards. Although he does not want to talk to Nick McCabe tonight for some reason. Well, I mean, you know. Yeah, he's not a big media guy. He's a pretty <laughs> quiet kid. He's you know, some kids just, I mean, they don't know what to say. They don't, they don't, they get nervous in the sense that they're scared they're gonna say something that shouldn't. Right. And it's and it's tough and it's and I, you know I get it. it and spent a lot of time interviewing high school kids from you know don't see a lot of freshmen but you know, over my days just because you know a lot of freshmen playing varsity, uh, but you know some of them are born doing it. I mean they can they can chat it up. Some it's just tough to tough to do and it's tough to talk about themselves. Hunter Thomas in the game, flags down prior to the snap. Be a penalty on the defense so to be first and five now. As Kansas had a winning streak, Dion back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, yeah, five yeah. game winner, and then they had guys like Darren Sproles back it's with D1 the, guys. Yeah, that's kind game. of the end of the D1 guys run. So this will be a, a two game win streak for the Kansas All Stars. It, Looking rather uh, bleak as a nice play there by Jack Creason of Excelsior Springs. But after you lose seven in a row, you're thinking, is Kansas going to win one? Well, uh, you know, the, I had a I had a former Missouri coach tell me, "Hey, I'm a Missouri guy, but I want I wanted Kansas to win last year. And you you want the game to be competitive. You want it to be something on the line. And, and Missouri just had a run there for a few years and, and some outstanding players." and really put together some great game plans. And they weren't all blowouts. There were some blowouts in there, but there was also, um, I remember the game at Blue Springs uh, we did a few years back. It was close. It was yeah. close right down to the end. And I mean, there was, you know, final drive trying to, um, when Greg Smith coached and, and Mike Bird, from, who was at Ball at the time, Greg Smith was at Pleasant Hill, they coached those games. And I mean, that was right down to the thing. And, and there were people standing and screaming and, and it was like a playoff game. I mean, it, it really was. It had that kind of feel to it. A lot of fun that night. It was a, a really fun game. And, and that's what you want to see. This one got away from it from Missouri uh, with the way Kansas played all through the third quarter. But uh, really, um, you want to see this series be close and you want to see the games be close because that's what uh, that's what makes it enjoyable for everybody. And not get chippy. On second down, quick pitch it out to Billy Conaway and he lost the handle and then his tackle immediately. It's Cade Hampton that got him, but Billy able to maintain possession for the Kansas All-Stars. 
He's had a couple negative plays in a row that's going to yeah. dent into his overall total, but he's had a great night. Certainly has. The Shawnee Mission North player headed to University of South Dakota. As the timeout's being used here. The Missouri side trying to hang on in this one. Well, the Lisher literal combo has been pretty good. I mean, uh, the last three games that Kansas has won in the last 10 years, it was Bob Lisher head coach, Mark Litchell head coach with Bob Lisher on the staff, and then Bob Lisher head coach again with Mark Litchell on the staff. So, yeah, two things. They may, they may 10, want to bring. Yeah. I don't know if the problem is, is Mark's moving on and Bob's on the other side of the state line. So, I don't know if you're Missouri, do you call Bob and say, hey, you want to come coach next year? <laughs> Yeah, you know that's a that's an idea. You know, it's tough for head coaches sometimes. I mean, they want to do it, but it's tough because you're trying to run your program. And I always wondered if there were like, you know, veteran coaches who either had moved on from coaching or, uh, you know, had retired or, or you know, like guys who become ads out there that maybe they'd want to do that. You know, run that ten days and, and help select that thing so that you know takes some of the pressure off of guys doing that you know veteran coaches I mean, that's just me talking i don't know if that's something they would ever do but you never know some veteran guys out there nice stuff by crease and uh, mcquillan and yeah coach lisher won in 2010 that was a good game at shawnee mission north 26 yeah. 23 game he says he's coached in this game six times overall his sons have played in this game so he has a lot of affinity for this Coaches Association and this All-Star game. I don't think it's been a fun week for him. He had a lot, number of his Lawrence Free State assistant coaches on his staff and five of his own players. So he said, but I'm just the CEO. I'm not going to run the offense. <laughs> I'm not going to run the defense. Which is what Littrell did last year. Yep. Um, just going to be the guy on the sidelines handling everything. And he brought in his former assistant, Oberzon, to run the defense. And I'm just going in the Hall of Fame. That's all. <laughs> So on the fourth down and 16, Missouri has exhausted all their timeouts, so they'll get it back here with a minute and a half left in the game as Lake, who is a place kicker, they made to punt, and punting is not his forte. Not bad, though. High end over end, short punt. Touch near the 40-yard line. Down near the 40-yard line. 19-yard punt there. Missouri with that timeout. We'll check out on the field here. They'll, they won't send uh, the video of this game to the punting hall of fame. No. No. But neither team really had a, you know, an and that's tough. Punter. And that's yeah. tough sometimes. I'm trying to remember the guy who punted at Missouri, or kicked at Missouri um, from like 2012 to 2016. Went to Lee Summit North. He he punted in the game at Belton in 2011, and it was unbelievable. Pass to the guy that just uh, caught the touchdown. That is a trainer. Looked like he was kind of the safety valve out there on that play. Yeah, he was just kind of floating near he the sideline. There, there, there was nobody around him. Yeah, and he was wide open. And able to get five yards on that play. Harold Trainer from Grandview just saw that nice long touchdown pass to him. Roush, the Liberty quarterback. Over the middle, and it's complete. Bryce Bertram down to the 30-yard line of the Kansas All-Stars. And the first down is Missouri in the hurry-up offense. Trailing by 14 here. Tram from Platt County headed to William Jewell. Well, they're hustling. Roush. Five, five goes. Going to the back of the end zone. Oh. oh, Reed Levi. Oh, he had him. He had him. They did five go routes on that. Had the ball and, and then ended up with the pylon in his hand. Levi there. had it in his hands and couldn't bring it in. Roush, it's not the cleanest ball, but just out of his... Oh, man. Spike the, spike the pylon when he got done. 
Second down and 10. Roush quick and behind the intended target, Jonas Bennett, incomplete. Frustrated was Thomas Stark from St. James Academy. Oh, he might get an interception. No interceptions. Today. No, we had a couple fumbles. Yeah. Or are we giving Fisher an interception or just. Uh, that's that, a pitch. Yeah, that's a Fumble. pitch. All right, yep. How many times have you seen that play? A defensive not, lineman intercepting a. I've not seen that. Quick I, pitch. Yeah, it's, it's a rarity. Roush going the low ball and officials. Nice call here. Incomplete. incomplete. All right. I did see Jerron Baston, who played at Blue Springs and played at Missouri, break through the line, rip the ball away from the running back behind the line and run in for a touchdown twice in a game. Wow. And I have a witness, Sam Mellinger, and I were sitting there when he was covering high schools. And not only did he do it the first time. 15 yards, previous spot, first down. The pass 15 yards was incomplete. Penalty. Blue Springs was winning the game, but Lee Summit North was giving them a game. And Mellinger looked at me and said, they just need Baston to go through there after he'd done it one time. He goes, they just need Baston to break through and rip the ball away and get a touchdown. And as his words were hanging in the air, Baston did the exact same thing. And Sam and I lost it. <laughs> now, before he was a big time columnist, yes. he was a high school sports reporter yes. for the Kansas City Stars. Yes. Sam Mellinger. Yeah. He was eating uh, blooming onions at the Blue Springs press box with me. Yeah. Back when we all didn't have gray hair. <laughs> yeah. Or Sam hides it. Sam hides it because he's got the blonde hair. Yeah. Second, Second down and ten. So we're trying to get some last second points here to make this closer. And Roush dodged one Lawrence line. And Eric Galbraith, who's slapping himself in the head because he missed him. And E.J. Jusum, his Lawrence teammate, wrapped him up. And that'll do it for this ball game. It's another Kansas winner. Well, they played in Kansas the last two times. Leavenworth and Olathe W's for the Sunflower State. As the final tonight is 35-21. The Kansas All-Stars win the 28th annual BUnion.com All-Star Football Game from Seaback in Olathe, put on by the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association. And we're back with the High B wrap-up. You're watching the High B High School Game of the Week. Kansas gets another win in this all-star game matchup between the Missouri side and the Kansas side. It's being brought to you by BUnion.com and Billy Conaway from Shawnee Mission North was our MVP of the game and Billy owned the edge and our MVP of the game was brought to you by Midland Marble and Granite, the premier source for flooring and granite countertops. Make sure you visit them today at MidlandMarble.com. And he is our MVP of the game as he went for 174 yards and a touchdown in leading the Kansas All-Stars to victory by the final score of 35-21. Let's go down to the field and talk with Billy. Here's Nick McCabe. Guys, I think he's a little excited. He had a heck of a game, 174 yards today. That's pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. Uh, well, gosh, put it put it into words. You, you come out against uh, against the best of the best of your peers, and you put on a show tonight. It's got to feel great. It, it feels it feels wonderful. Um, shoot, I just listened to coach, man. Coach said trust the offense. I didn't at first, and soon as I got the ball, I trusted it. Everybody fell it fell in line, and we just we just got it moving. We just got it moving. Shout out Sam Macklin. <laughs> yeah, I know I know you wanted to give a shout out. Was it was that? <laughs> it was a Sam, yeah. Man, uh, I'm just glad we put on the show tonight. We put on the show tonight, we was down and out, but you know, I gave them, I gave them my words and we came back, we won the game. And so, you know, it was a team effort and hey, I'm glad I, I went out with a dub, man. Last high school game, couldn't have been better. When I talked to you earlier, you didn't seem rattled. Your, your team fell in an early hole, but gosh, then you scored 35 straight points to, to, to take control of the game. I told him, I told him, it only takes three minutes to get back in the game. We got back in the game in two. You did indeed. That's Billy Conaway, guys. What a great game for him tonight. He was the MVP tonight, and uh, we'll send it back up to you.
Special thanks to the Greater Kansas City Football Coaches Association, the coaches, the players, the president, Mike Zagunas, our head coaches, William Harris of Van Horn, Bob Lisher of Lawrence Free State, and William Chrisman. Our producer's been Dan McCaffrey. For Dion Clisso, Nick McCabe, and our entire Spectrum Sports Broadcasting crew, Kevin White saying so long from the 2019 BeUnion.com Kansas versus Missouri All-Star Football Game. Our final once again, Kansas wins it back-to-back -back years, 35 to 21. We say happy Father's Day weekend to you as we say goodnight from Seaback in Olathe.